Welcome to Channel ATV Live here at the podcast studio in Seattle, Washington. I'm so excited to have wonderful, wonderful folks that you guys will be able to meet today. Most of you guys always ask me, what does it take to be an actor? What does it take to produce a movie? What does it take to be successful in life? And today we have folks that can help us answer these questions. I know that you guys are excited. Thank you for all your questions and uh, all your curiosity through social media asking questions. But today, this is a day we've been waiting for to make sure that we talk to the folks that make it happen in Hollywood. And uh, so please, if you're listening right now, wherever you are, please tune in, send in our questions through Facebook, through YouTube, and just uh, come along and just come along with the journey so you can make sure you learn something today. So I'm so excited to be here. My name is David Shaw from Channel ATV. If you're trying to connect with us, please visit our social media platforms. It's our Channel ATV everywhere. Also go to our website, www.channelatv.org. So today we're talking about a movie which was produced by my brother, Marcus and the whole crew, and uh, it's called Heaven's Revenge. I've seen this movie myself, but I'll let you guys take a look at it just a little bit. It's available on all social media platforms and actually also on uh, Tubi, if I'm not mistaken, but Marcus will clarify that. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. This is David here at Channel ATV. Welcome, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Jackson, how it feels to lie to me over and over and over again. <laughs> and now, and now every man in the history of men are going to have to, to pay for a simple breakup. It's pathetic! You know, I don't think he would like that Why would you like make up a lie like much. that and do something like that? But I, I'm his brother. We brothers, and you know how we get down. I just want to say what's up to him. Just look at him real quick. All right, and welcome back. We want to welcome those of you that are tuning in all the way from Africa, those of you that are tuning in from England. Welcome to the broadcast. And I know this is going to be one of those shows. It's a Monday. We welcome you. Thank you for taking your time. Those of you that are watching from within the United States, we know the game is going on, but you're taking your time to be with us. So we appreciate that. So without waiting too much time, I'm going to welcome my brother here in the in the feed, Brother Marcus Neil Jamal. And how are you, my brother? I'm doing wonderful, my brother. Thank you so much for having us on. It's uh, just an honor and a pleasure, you know, to everyone out there all over the world. It's it's such a great opportunity for me to get a chance to talk to you all and, you know, just answer some questions, let y'all know what it was like to be a part of such an amazing film. Absolutely, absolutely. You look good, by the way. You look the same way, you know, the last time I seen you. You know, the last time I saw you was a few months ago. Uh, last year, actually. It feels like yesterday because we yeah. talk almost every week, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, Absolutely. we met at the HAPA Awards last year. 
Yes, sir. So you were there in the audience watching me get the award, and we, yeah. have, we had a great conversation, and we've been in touch since. And you were supposed to join me at the Grammys. You slacked out a little bit. You chose <laughs> something else. <laughs> you know I'm coming to the BET Awards. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll see you. You'll see you. will see you. Just a few more days from now. So yeah. I'm looking forward. But, uh, yeah, seriously, brother, you know, so what does it take to be who you are? Because I know who you are, but please, for the viewers that are watching right now, introduce yourself, because I know that... Um, you're always used to being in front of the camera, but now you're doing the behind scenes stuff. Yes, what sir. do you enjoy the most between being in front of the camera or being behind the camera? Well, I'm gonna just be uh, totally honest with you. I genuinely enjoy being in front of the camera, um, but over the years that I've been in this industry, what I've learned is that you can you only have so much time. Right. So when I got, in, got behind the scenes, it was primarily because I have specific goals Right. Um, I do have a creative drive. I'm a writer, I'm a producer, I'm a director. Uh, right. So in order to make sure you get to do the work that you put yourself out to do, that you set yourself out to do, um, that's why I started writing and producing. Uh, yeah. You know, in a perfect world, and actually it, it is a perfect world technically because I'm, I'm not only cast in some really amazing projects right now, but I'm also producing amazing projects. And uh, that allows for me to just guarantee that I'm fulfilling all of my goals and my dreams as an actor. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, a lot of us uh, start, you know, doing something. Sometimes we don't understand the destiny. We don't understand where we're going. We just try different things, you know. Yeah. You started as a wrestler, believe it or not. You know, you look much smaller in, on camera <laughs> than you. <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, and then, you know, God had a different plan for you. So tell the viewers right now, you know, how did you transition? Because you could have given up easily when, you know, really? wrestling didn't go the way you wanted it you know, to go. But you yeah. decided to find a different passion. And here we are today. You're producing movies and you're acting and things like that. So how did you, you know, enhance and embrace your, your destiny, your new destiny, so to speak? Well, so when I first got into entertainment, wrestling was all I cared about. I, you know, when I when it was 1999, I, I started training while I was in college, um, Bone Breakers Academy out in Maryland. Uh, and I had kind of immediate success. I came to L.A. in, in 2000 and uh, was part of a, a TV series called Urban Wrestling Alliance. Right. And, uh, that's actually how I met Lenise Adams, who's the executive producer and star of this film. Uh, she and I actually played a couple over 20 years ago. And that when we came out here, they put us in acting classes. They kind of, you know, looked at it more as a TV series than a wrestling series. Right. And that was like kind of the initial introduction. And uh, after that show, you know, didn't continue to go. It was supposed to be picked up by BET, and it just didn't happen. Uh, I started to transition, and thankfully, uh, uh, once I started to promote myself as an actor, I was uh, cast on the last season of HBO's The Wire. Um, I had a, a, a feature role yeah. as a police officer in several episodes, several of the last several episodes. And that was really a launching point for me. And, it, it, and I already had the every intention of moving back to L.A. Yeah. Um, I went ahead and did it. And actually, I, I started when I like I actually was producing uh, wrestling projects as a, yeah. my first producing project was in 2003. Uh, so when I came to L.A., I actually picked right up on that. And I was an associate producer for a, a, a show about the Wild Samoan family. Right. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, that didn't get picked up. It was just bad timing. It was right around the time when reality TV was getting a little more edgy and, you know, more Kardashians versus the Osbournes. Uh, so, you know, that that just told me to just continue to focus on things that are working. It's all about timing. So I never gave up on anything. It was always just finding the right time. Yeah, that was always the the lesson that I kept learning along the way. So even with wrestling, I still on and off again, get back in the ring. And I, I, I just told my son the other night, uh, I think I got a little bit more in, in me. So you actually <laughs> see me wrestle again. Don't don't try it, man. Don't try it. You're <laughs> into the ring, and uh, you know we don't want any other result. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, for some of the folks that are watching right now, the interest came from. Um, as you know, we have a very diverse, uh, you know, following, uh, yeah. you know, folks that are wondering right now, you know, if I wake up one day and I'm trying to become an actor, mm -hmm. you know, what's the first thing that I need to do? First thing you need to do is train to be an actor. Uh, a lot of people think acting is, is something that anyone can do. Uh, they, they just think it's a matter of memorizing lines and you right. just go out there. 
first of all, there's a natural ability that that really helps to have. And that's where it may seem like anyone can do it. Yeah. But you have to have the structure. You have to have the discipline. Uh, it's not just about memorizing lines. It's about uh, embracing the character. You have to become someone else. And it's almost like channeling. I mean, I can be honest when you know, playing this character, Jackson Davis, uh, was one of the uh, highlights of my career. And it's because uh, I was able to connect with that character in such yeah. a way. He was a professional wrestler. You know, there's a lot of similarities to him and, you know, kind of a younger version of myself. Uh, so I didn't feel I was me. And even when I watched, I've watched this movie so many times myself, yeah. not because I'm in it, but just because I genuinely enjoy the dialogue, the writing. Um, yeah. who we can thank Miranda Bowden Parker for. She did such an incredible job of telling the story. And um, if you're training to become an actor, you have to be versatile. Don't don't dedicate yourself to any one style of acting. You know, there's right. acting, there's all these different styles. You know, try different things out. It's really helpful in, in life experience. If you're if you're on the younger side and you're trying to get into acting, just know that the more you know outside of you know just acting it alone, yeah. the more skills you have, uh, they're always looking for real people. In other words, yeah. people who can who have like a range that allows if, if 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 you're supposed to know how to swim, if you're supposed to know how to jump out of a plane, if you're so a particular to talent, swim. a particular talent that you have, maybe naturally or yes. physically. Yeah, I, I have something for you. So I have a friend of mine, he lives right there in LA. He's also one of the actors. He does a lot more commercials. And we'll talk about commercials when Robert comes in, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, I have some questions for him. But this brother, you know, shout out to Mark Brown. He um he used to be a lot bigger, right? So he used mm -hmm. to be a lot bigger. And most of the you know the characters that he played, he was more like uh aggressive and stuff like that you know so the older he became you know he was like man i don't want to <laughs> always just be one dimensional so he lost a ton of weight but yeah. now when he's going for casting you know it's a he's given roles that are different from what he naturally can do right yeah so from one one producer to the next you know um when you're casting folks what what do you consider first i know that we only have a limited sort of time but i know you can answer this real quickly sure. you know, what's the first thing that you look at when I'm casting, you know, personally, because I'm, I have a network, I, I as a uh, producer, usually cast people who have already had experience working with directly. Yeah. Um, but what I look for is for someone to, to kind of, I'm a very visual person. So anytime I write, I always write with somebody in my mind, even if they don't end up getting cast, but they at least shape the character out. And yeah. So when I'm looking for someone to play that role, if it's not going to be the person who I had in mind, is, is someone who's going to carry kind of a, a similar element. And thing is, it's not, you know, it's not about size or anything. It has to be more with the character themselves and what it is that, you know, they're bringing. Because you want you want a diverse cast and diversity goes, you know, across racial, physical, yeah. you know, including, um, you know, our ADA community and wanting to just make sure that the person fits the role. And not in some you know commercial way when I say that, but in a, yeah. in a very personal way of, of how they would tell that character story. Absolutely. Very well said. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're joining us right now, we're having a great conversation with Brother Marcus here. And sooner or later, he's going to introduce the group. Uh, you know, it's a very diverse and interesting group. I was listening to his stories. I was enjoying in a green room when we <laughs> all the stories. So I can't wait for, for the folks to meet them and, and really have a dialogue with them and get to learn about some of the details in the business. Now, uh, you and I know that, uh, you know, as, as a filmmaker, you have a responsibility to tell your story, not only as a, as a minority, but also as a man but as a human being, you know, um, why is it important for you to make sure that when you produce a movie, it's very balanced to make sure that the gender, you know, is, is considered, you know, ethnicity and things like that. So in this day and era, you know, what are some of the things that you consider the most as you are producing a movie? You know, from what perspective do you tell your stories, whether it's from religion or sports or whatever you mm -hmm. what, where, do you, where do you tap that 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 talent from? Where, do, where does that production come from, from your own perspective? Well, I think, again, I think we actually gravitate towards people who, you know, are genuine, who, you know, have integrity, who who kind of fit what you're looking for as a representation of yeah. whatever racial group they are in. Yeah. Um, every movie, every project that that can generate an audience, including even just being, you know, here on, on this uh, 
on this interview, it's it's so many people are watching and we have a responsibility uh, when as filmmakers, as producers to give people a visual that shapes the world the way we would like to see it if, it, if the world isn't that way, you know? So when, if I'm casting, if I'm, you know, doing a project that I have any say so on, absolutely is it important that we have uh, a great amount of diversity, but it's not just, hey, I'm gonna pick a, a you know, this yeah. person or that person. It's more, I wanna find people who are strong representations of, you know, whatever their background is. Yeah. Very well said. Do you have uh, sometimes family members talking about, hey, can you hook me up? I need to <laughs> <I think you're laughs> <active. laughs> You know, I'll be honest, my, people see what it's like behind the scenes and they, yeah. they get turned off real <laughs> fast because it's, it's, and, you know, talking to, again about your expiring actors out there, you yeah. have to truly love this business. Um, I'm sure you, you you could think of somebody who maybe was famous at one time and you kind of do yeah. that. Where are they now? That's very common in this industry. Um, nothing happens overnight and success is not uh, forever. You know, we see, know. we've seen so many stories. I mean, we've just been watching Johnny Depp and Amber Heard and this, you know, very, you know, I, I just, it's not even about whose side you're taking. It's like, you're looking at a very personal situation by That's people right. that you would assume have it all together. Uh, so there's a lot to this and what, whatever level you are on as an actor, this is why it's so important to have that, that character and integrity and all the, you know, balance and, and you know, having a, fam a family or a structure behind you, that a support system that are really gonna, you know, kind of keep you level because it's yeah. a lot of ups and downs, you know, there, you, you can just overnight become a multimillionaire, but at the same time, uh, you can go years without getting anything major and sleeping yeah. on a couch or on the floor somewhere. And True. everyone that truly loves doing this does it regardless of what position they're in. They, they do it as long as they physically are capable of doing it. That's right. So we, we, we have a lot of questions for you, but, uh, you know, in the interest of time, we, we can't let you go, but definitely we want to transition on to Peter, who's uh, talked to us about commercials and things like that. But I have more questions for you and you have something interesting coming up. So stay tuned, Marcus, and, uh, you know, just uh, chill and relax. Maybe you can look on the TV and just check <laughs> the scores of the game because I know we all... You know, <laughs> but yeah, so definitely stick around, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching Channel ATV, we'll be right back. All right, thank you for joining us right now. We're going to bring in a master of commercials. We know that when we watch TV every now and then, we have to take a break and go to some kind of commercial. So let's bring in uh, our brother here, Brother Robert, who's going to share a little bit about the history of uh, his own life and uh, the interest and experience. We are so excited to have you, Robert. It's good to see you, brother. Nice to be here. Thanks very much. I love All it. right. So I know it's uh, you love you love football, you love basketball and stuff like that. So tell us a little bit about who you are, just for the folks that are watching right now. I know who you are, but you know, for the folks that are watching right now, please just briefly share your your story and who you are. Yeah, I've been a I've been a working actor for 30, 30 years now, almost, and uh, and I've also been a, a filmmaker, uh, like Marcus was saying. There are a lot of actors now that are taking the bull by the horns. So I've directed and produced a handful of films. Um, and as you pointed out, a lot of my career has been in the commercial world yeah. and I've had the opportunity, you know, you mentioned the game. I did a commercial with Steph Curry uh, a yes. few years back. That was a lot of fun. And I've worked with some great people in the commercial world and, uh, both athletes and actors. I just did a commercial with Eugene Levy of, uh, Schitt's Creek. And, um, uh, I can say that since it's, that is the name of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <Her name is TV laughs> Joe, Schitt's Creek. Uh, but yeah, but uh, I, uh, I really love this business and I, and I love uh, <clears throat> what um, what Marcus had to say about, you know, just just, um, you know, I, th I think you've got to really love it because there's a lot of a lot of hurdles. But but when you when you're working, it's it's awesome. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, just the networking aspect of things that comes with the business itself. I was watching you with uh, Brother Ernest going back and forth, and you guys were talking about, uh, you know, how many years you've put in into the business, you know, and, uh, and the, the, the friendship that you created over the years, you know. So talk about just uh, what's been some, some of the most difficult things that you had to overcome to become a person that we see today. Yeah, well, I love that guy, by the way, Ernest. Is, Ernest and I have been been at it for a long, long time. And, you know, I think the <clears throat> I really do think the, the hardest part is the, is the in-between. Michael Caine, yeah. Michael Caine, the British actor, said that, uh, you know, you, you really, actors are compensated more for the in-between time than the actual time that they're working. Yeah. That's, the, that's the hardest part. It's, you know, you're, 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 you, you finish a job and, you know, you got to get that next job. And, and even at the celebrity level, it's not, it's not yeah. a guarantee. Yeah. Um, and, and so, I've been grateful that over the years, I mean, I've, I've had the chance to work with Steven Spielberg twice. Uh, in the commercial world, uh, I've had a lot of directors that bring me back uh, and, and producers and casting people. And kind of as Marcus uh, talked about, you, you, you want to work with people you enjoy working with, but uh, you also got to deliver. I mean, and so sure. it's, it's, it's um, I'm grateful that I have both a, a fun working relationship with these people mm -hmm. and also, uh, you know, what I consider a friendship with, with a lot of them. Yeah. And, and I think my, uh, one of the best tools in my toolbox is improvisation. Yeah. And, and, uh, and yeah, and I think if you can perfect that as an actor, especially in this day and age, because so many films uh, are not sh now shot on 35. Like my first two yeah. films that I directed were, shot on 35 and you're, you're, you're worried about film. You're, you're just thinking, no, no, no just get, get, the, get the script down. Yeah. But now with the luxury of digital, um, you know, you can play around a little bit. Yeah. And, and even that's the ability of uh, shooting something, you can review it right there and then erase it and do it right there and then. Back Absolutely. in the day, it was a whole different beast, you know, altogether. You know, and uh, so let's talk about things a little bit more technical. Um, you know, you back in the day, most folks could not afford to get a black magic, you know, um, uh, for example, not even to get the black magic, but even a red. You could not afford to get a red. You know, for someone who's watching right now, some of these kids who are picking up the camera, they pick up a Canon 6D or 5D, you know, you know, where do you think, what would you say to someone who has a limited budget? Say they have $10,000, they're trying to produce a documentary or, or if any sort of film, you know, what can somebody do with that? more budget a lot i mean i would say you know what's what you know I, I i wish i knew what camera we used on uh, in heaven's revenge but i know it was black magic i believe yeah i think yeah so so you have access i mean you still have to light them well you, yeah. still, you still have to you know you still have the same process of, of lighting and and actors hitting their marks and so forth but yeah. but it's 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 amazing that you can go out and shoot a movie for next to nothing because yeah. the cameras are available and uh and black magic to me you could you could probably hold if it's shot well lit well yeah. you could probably hold a black magic or a red up to a 35 and yeah you'd be, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference if it's if yeah. it's lit well that's right that's right and uh you know now with even with a cell phone i've, I've seen kids in school oh. and, uh, producing amazing you know quality stuff and uh you know it, it's just amazing that uh, but the passion has to be there like you said in the beginning you know so yeah you know what you do yeah i'm sorry to interrupt you, but you're, you're exactly right and and you know with with the with the pandemic especially yeah. you know a lot of actors were confined to shooting self-tapes on on their on their phone you know mm -hmm. And and you'd be, you'd be amazed at the quality, uh, yeah. you know, of a, of a self tape on on a phone. I mean, these these newer phones are terrific. Yeah. You know? So even so. Under, under low light, they can still you know produce something that's that you can you can see. Yeah. So I want to ask you this. Uh, you know, talking about commercials. You know, um, you 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 did uh, you worked on a project with Steph Curry, the great Steph Curry. I can say you know best on the game, the previous game. Very I don't funny. know how he's doing now, but uh, he's is very very talented. You know, so. You know, where, where do you go, you know, mind-wise when you're working with such, you know, sometimes because, you know, we most people ask me this too because I work with a lot yeah. of celebrities, but sometimes, you know, you meet someone who you really never thought you could get a chance to meet, you know. Yeah. Who have you ever worked with? You're like, you just kind of like, you know, you have to remind yourself like, hey, you know, I'm here to work, you know, without really being starstruck. 
Oh, uh, you know, I think the biggest movie was was Ocean's Eleven because Ocean's, Ocean's Eleven was just so star studded. Yeah. But there, but you know, Steph Curry. What was funny about that spot was because I have to play a guy that has no idea who he is. Uh, if, okay. <laughs> for those of, those of your audience who haven't seen the spot, yeah. I'm working. I'm working in a cafeteria and I'm serving curry, chicken right. curry. Chicken and curry. Steph comes in and says, "Hey, man, thank you for serving that curry." You know, I lace up my shoes for guys like you, and I'm like, "Yeah, I have no idea who you are," yeah. and uh, and I of course did. Uh, but but it was it was fun to to. And he was very funny too, by the way. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of these athletes are kind of natural natural actors. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I've had the great fortune of. Uh, I mean, uh, let's say Ocean's Eleven was a big film. Uh, yeah. I worked on Lincoln. I worked on. Uh, uh, you know, I will say like uh, on Lincoln you uh daniel day lewis you may know this already is a is a total method actor oh, so you never you don't ever acknowledge him outside yeah. of president lincoln or yeah. whatever absolutely and he, he lives it entirely and i and i also got to to work with uh and go out to dinner with tommy lee jones who's a yeah. pretty cantankerous guy i was intimidated by him but i i realized that there's a wit there's yeah. a wit underneath this kind of you know, cranky guy. And he was, he was really cool. Really cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool, man. Ocean's 11, man. That's a legendary movie right there. Um, you know, so when, when your day comes, you know, you know, when it's all said and done, how would you like to be remembered? I would like to be remembered as someone who brings truth to his work and someone who I've always admired character actors and leading actors who, you know, made the film better, whatever, whatever, you know, it starts with the writing, but that, but that, that, that I would be given um, a pat for 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 being true to what was written and how was, and what my role called for, and for somebody who again just brought uh, a believability to it and helped and helped tell that story, because I think films are all about uh, just uh, my my favorite films are those that I'm I'm entertained. And I'm also educated. I walk away thinking, wow, that's, that's, that's something to think about. Absolutely. Even, even if it's comedy, even, you know, even if it's comedy. Absolutely. No, you're so right, man. I can talk to you all day, you know, but I know that uh, you're going to stick around until the end so we can all have a conversation. I'm, I'm sure you're excited to see some of your, your, your fellow cast from the movie Heaven's Revenge, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, just like old times, talk about uh, what it took and the, the time that you spent together just uh, making the film. So I appreciate you for being here. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. If you live in the Seattle, Washington area, we have the Madaraka Festival coming up in August 13th and the 14th. There'll be a lot of good singers, a lot of celebrities. Please look into that. You know, look, put it on your calendar. If you want to join, you know, the production of Madaraka Festival and enjoy the actual festival, please reach out to One Vibe Africa and they will give you the information that you need. I am so excited for this next uh, lady who's coming up. Joanne is incredible. I can't wait for you guys to talk to her. She has a lot of talent, a lot of stories, a lot of fun stuff to come joan my friend welcome it's good to see you you look lovely thank by the way you. thank you so much you're pretty good looking yourself davies <laughs> hey man you know i have to keep up with you guys so you know <laughs> you know <laughs> i have to represent myself well so how are you doing i'm wonderful thank you for having me on i'm really happy to be here and i'm um, just happy to meet with the cast that i haven't seen so many of them in quite a while so this is a good day. This is a good yes. day. <laughs> technology, right? Technology. So yeah, I like the way you showed up here. Yeah. Folks that are doing your lights and everything, it just kind of reminded me like they have behind scenes stuff, right? Like <laughs> fixing it's your lighting. Like behind the scenes, it's old school <laughs> and I need to get some help. <laughs> I don't mind saying I'm technically challenged. Right, right. But I'm also <laughs> wise enough to know when I need to get some help. So 
absolutely, absolutely. Shout out to my yeah. cousin Brandon for helping me. <laughs> absolutely. No, you're welcome. You know, technology. So, you know, let me tell you what happened. And, and I know that some of the folks are listening behind scenes. So, you know, there's always craziness happening. So somebody was on uh, uh, on the post. They're just commenting different crazy stuff. Nothing to do with what we're talking about, right? Just mm -hmm. But the beauty of technology is that I had to block you know, who the person that was. You know, they're posting some other commercial stuff about Tinder and things like that. You know, okay. so real quickly, I did that within 10 seconds, you know, so that's the beauty of technology. So okay. so it's not so, so bad, you know, so you yeah. got to love technology, Joan, you know. <laughs> good, good, good. Well, I'm right. happy to be here and I'm, you know, I just want to, um, yeah. I want to piggyback on something that Marcus said about yes. um, success in Hollywood. Yeah. I didn't start acting till I was in my mid sixties. Absolutely, I moved here from Houston, Texas when I retired from the airlines. Mm -hmm. So acting was not on my radar at all. I was planning to travel. I actually came here to help my son out who was acting and yeah. writing and producing. Um, I just kind of fell into acting by accident. I just happened right. to be in the right place at the right time. And that was at Choi Skinner's acting school. I just went there because I was bored. And they put me to work. <laughs> yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. You went there because you're bored. You went there because you're bored. And now no, you're bored. I was bored. I had moved here. I was in my 60s. I didn't know anybody. Um, my wow. friends were my son's friends. I, I'm adventurous. Oh, so my goodness. one day I just, I was bored. I wanted something to do. So I went to this acting school and they made me work. Like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. So <laughs> I was kind of fell into this. <laughs> do you regret Absolutely not. Absolutely okay. not. Um, sure. You know, I, I think choice really like create a monster because yeah, you can't tell me I'm not a list. I, I haven't been in all those a -list <laughs> movies yet. They're coming. Yeah. Um, and by the way, speaking of choice Skinner, who's my acting coach. Happy uh -huh. birthday, Choice. I love Happy you. <laughs> yes. So, so you always actually, I, that's how I met Marcus is through, yeah. you know, he saw me do some work and he actually. He told me when we did the Black League of Superheroes that he had right. me in mind as a character. I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. He actually yeah. pictured me in that role. So, you know, thank you, Marcus, for always, you know, looking out for me. And, yeah. and that's how I ended up being in Heaven's Revenge, playing yeah. his Aunt Virginia. Absolutely. Now, so, John, you know, you and I were talking, um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we, we don't, choose you know what character to play right but for you if you are given the opportunity to choose your own character what kind of a character would you play i am a history buff davies so mm -hmm. i am looking for that historical figure yeah um i study history i read history i, I go to you know i go to different places yeah um because i love history i love the culture of different uh ethnicities and different yeah. countries and I really enjoy that. So far, I haven't had that that historical character. It's yeah. coming. <laughs> it's coming. And I just need to make sure I stay prepared for that. But yeah. I, I played a pretty diverse group of, of people in the films that I've been in mm -hmm. so far. Um, <laughs> That's good. I played yeah. a homeless woman. I played a, a, a sassy sexy grandma uh -huh. Uh -huh. and um you know i played a a schizophrenic uh right. you know i i played different different oh, roles yeah 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 and it's all exciting to me <laughs> absolutely absolutely so um you know obviously being a, a lady yourself a classy lady so to speak you know in actuality um you know what would you say to someone? Because right now we know that women need to be involved in the industry. You know, first of all, if you look at the history, you know, we used to say actress, right? But right. now it's just actor, everybody, because everybody's the same. You understand that, right? right so right. from your perspective, you know, what do you think needs to change in Hollywood to make sure that women are given more of a role, both behind the scenes and in front of the camera as well? So what needs to change from over the years, be, you being involved in, into the, the scene? You know, what do you think needs to change to improve the platform? We're getting better, but we're not there. Unfortunately, I don't think doors are just going to automatically open up for us. So mm -hmm. I think we have to just 
you know, we just have to push those doors open ourselves. You know, right. <clears throat> I didn't plan on this. You know, God had a different plan for me than I have for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one thing you need to do is you need to have faith in yourself. You need to have faith in yourself and your talents and your value, whatever industry it, it is, mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. it's acting or some other venue. Believe in who you are and and go for it. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Be who you are. Be your authentic self. And don't be afraid to, you know, pat yourself on the back. You know, yeah. don't be afraid to let people know I'm here. I'm talented. I have value. I have passion. Yeah. And and that is speaking of passion. That's one thing I bring to my roles. I bring passion to my role. I try Absolutely. to really be respectful of the character. Um, I try to be respectful of the writer, the director, and my acting partner. I have a responsibility. Yeah. But that's across that's across the board in anything you do in life. Give it, give it 110%. Um, in school, I was never happy with being a B student. I wanted to be an A student. In fact, yeah, I wanted so, to be so, an A plus. So you cannot be an uh, a A list, a, a, a D list or a B list in this case because you've always been a <laughs> well, I am an A list actor just because the rest of the world doesn't know it yet doesn't mean I'm not there already. <laughs> I, I believe in myself and I think people need to just go forward. Um, several of my yeah. friends have started businesses after retirement in their 60s yeah. and we're all doing well. And it's funny. We're just amazed at what everybody else is doing. We're so we're proud of each other for going with it, you know, for saying, yeah. you know, I'm retired. But I'm not gonna sit home on the couch watching TV. I, yeah. I got and things watch, to do. Watch, yeah, watch the world pass you by, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So be strong. Go for it, women. If opportunities don't open up for you, make your own opportunities. I yeah. like that. I like yeah, that. Make your own opportunities. I love that. Yeah. So you won a lot of awards over the years. You know, uh, what? Which one stood out? I know all of them are important to you, but which one stood out to where you were like, "Oh my God, I'm really, I'm really here." You know, I've made it. So, which one stood out and why? Okay, I did. Um, I did a short film, Maggie, um, yeah. written and directed by P. Chanda Dubose, um, and it was it started as a live uh, live video during the pandemic, mm -hmm. and I did play a schizophrenic homeless woman. It was a one woman show. And we got a lot of positive feedback. So we turned it into a short film. It won numerous awards. Um, I won several awards. I won a Best Actress Award. Um, but what I was most proud of playing Maggie was not, not what I brought to the character. Yeah. But the awareness of the homeless situation. Um, mm. I'm very passionate about that because I live in Los Angeles. Yes, yes. I yes. can't drive five minutes without seeing a homeless person. Oh. And unfortunately, a lot of people um, assume that homeless people are alcoholics or they're on mm. drugs or, you know, they're messed up in the head. Sometimes they're messed up in the head because they're homeless. Correct. Um, Correct. A lot of times they fall on hard times, jobs, mm. family, whatever. You don't know what someone's story is. And reality is that a lot of people in homeless in Los Angeles, at least, they're just a couple of paychecks away from being homeless. Oh, absolutely, that's you everywhere. Can't that's the whole to United States in LA because it's very hard to catch up. So yeah. that is one of the that's that's one of the things that I'm most um, I shouldn't say that I'm most proud of because I'm proud of all the work and I'm proud of all the directors that have honored me by casting me. Um, but that's one that's my first one where I really felt a need to give everything to that character. Absolutely. But I have other movies in, you know, in the books that I'm working on. Um, I work with um, Troy Skinner, who I love, and we've got a movie coming out, um, A New Life, that I'm really proud of. Yeah. Um, another movie I did, Once Upon a Lifetime, by David Skato, and um, just beautiful stories by beautiful people, independent filmmakers, yeah. I fully support. And Absolutely. I just, I look forward to seeing, you know, what else is coming. I'm also with my son, James, um, co-producing his story, American Ronin. Yeah. So I've 
got a few things on the books, but I am going to get some travel in there because I did retire from the airline. <laughs> so you still have a lot of miles to. to yeah, go. I got to spread those wings. There you go. There you go. If you have more miles, you can push them over here, too, because I always travel. So <laughs> you know what yeah. that means. Well, Joanne, listen, you know, you're an early to all of us. And I'm sure all these cast that I've had the opportunity to work with you, they can agree, right? Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. I'm honored. I'm honored. Yeah, I'm honored to you. work with everyone that I've worked with. And ladies, don't let age stop you. You get out there and do your thing, honey. Amen. 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 And Joanne, we can talk to you all day, all night, you know, but hang tight so we can bring you with the rest of the, the folks. So we, we are standing by to have a great conversation with our brother Ernest as we transition into the next stage. Stay tuned. We'll be right ladies. back. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you know, eventually somebody is going to find me. Man, when they do, your ass is going to jail. Well, we'll just have to wait and see, don't we? Evan? Hey, is that you? Hey. Hi, Fred. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I would have asked the same about you. But I still see you wearing that golden smile. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I'm glad to see you two worked it out. Yeah. I told that man he was a fool. I mean, a fool for letting you slip through his hands. <laughs> you know, he was so distraught, he wasn't in his right mind when you two broke. Well, you, you know what I mean. You know? Fools do foolish things. Good to see yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, like you said that, like the movie, Crazy Stupid Love. I've never met a man that haven't made a mistake that didn't cost him his life, especially one in love. Yeah. I have to admit, I know are locked up because of some stupid. I don't want to be negative about women. I'm sorry, but you know okay. what I mean. <laughs> I knew you two would work it out in no time. Y'all make a beautiful couple. Y'all really do. And everybody knows it. Just glad to see you two worked it out. So Thank how's you. Our, how's our guy? Ah, uh, you know, he's resting. It's a tough process, but he's okay. You know, I'm still so shocked all this happened. You ain't shocked, like... I'm just glad they said he was gonna survive. Really. Absolutely. Well, you know Jackson, he just... He won't give up easy. Mm. All right, welcome back. If you're joining us right now, we're having a great conversation with all the cast from uh, Heaven's Revenge, the movie, which is available right now on Tubi. You go out there and watch it if you haven't seen it. It's an amazing movie. So I have the privilege and honor to bring in our brother here, Brother Ernest. It's good to see you, my brother. I know you don't love technology, but you got to use it. You have no choice. How are you doing, sir? <laughs> I'm good. And my name is Ernest Hardin Jr. Just for There you go. Name. There you go. They know you. Now they, 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 now they know. <laughs> They'll look you up. Now they'll know. <laughs> yeah. I, Jesse, well, I, I noticed uh, that the Detroit Lions uh, logo on your shirt. Are you, are you a super fan of the Detroit Lions? I am a long-suffering <laughs> fan for the Detroit Lions. Uh, my father was a Detroit Lions fan, and I am a Detroit Lions fan, and my son is a Detroit Lions fan. Three right. generations of complete loss. We've oh. never sniffed the Super Bowl, and and as we were talking about before, there's a little joke that is going yes. on. But yes. that, uh, they say that the, the guy from Detroit died and right. went to heaven, and there was St. Peter's at the gate and saying, well, you know, you haven't been that really that good, so I don't right. know if I can let you in. But right. He says, but, but I'm a long-suffering Lions fan. He says, oh, oh, you yeah. you. Oh, oh, yeah, you suffered long enough. Come on, here. Come on here. Lions fan, of course. So oh, it's, my God. It's, it's, been, it's been something. But, you know, it's yeah. really just hopeful. And uh, even when we had someone like Barry Sanders, right. who was like uh, just – but they didn't put the team around him and then took some of the line away, and then he just quit. He said, That was it. Yeah, he was done. Yeah, and we had the uh, – what is his name? Uh, 
Matron, Metron, yeah, Megatron, and, Megatron, yeah, yeah, and he quit, and so I mean, <laughs> they just they're by <laughs> themselves trying to do. The only thing that's really good is this yeah. year they traded the um, quarterback, yes, to the Los Angeles Rams, right. and, and so they, we rooted yeah. for him. And Where's, he won the Super Bowl this year. Right. He's actually the Super Bowl champ now. Yes, yes. And so yes. that's how that we're living through him. We, Man, you know, that's our Super Bowl. Listen, brother, I can, I can relate to that. I was there at Super Bowl. I saw it with my own eyes, you know. So I know I was there because we we love comeback stories, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, and even up to now, when we look at it, you know, like you say, you know, you're living through him. So that's a good thing. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm glad for him. He he deserved it. He never complained. Yeah. He always went to work, and uh, he was very good. But again, yeah, uh, they didn't surround him with uh, a winning team, and so yeah. I was glad that they they gave him a shot to get around uh, a good team that won the Super Bowl. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I, I cover a lot of uh, you know all these uh, NFL teams, you know. So you know, but as a human being, you know, I live in Seattle, so obviously, you know, <laughs> I, gotta... I know. As a matter of fact, <laughs> one of my uh, my best. Right. One of my best friends, his name is Ryan Long, he's a comedian, uh -huh. and he lives in Seattle. And okay. uh, he talks about, he's, he's hurt now because you guys traded oh, yeah. the quarterback. Been, Russell Wilson, yeah. Russell Wilson, and so it's like a, a jilted girlfriend because he hears all the yeah. good stuff that Denver is planning on doing with right. Russell Wilson. And right. another thing that you guys had, the Seattle yeah. Super Signing. Yeah, the and song is oh, called, don't and even go there. OKC, <laughs> and so he was never happy yeah. About their good fortune with Kevin Durant and everybody. Yes. Said, yes. I just, just like breaking up with a girlfriend that, you know, uh, and then seeing her doing well. Man, we, we've well. suffered too, man. I'm telling you, we've suffered too. I was at the game, the last, you know, sunny game when Kevin, you know, they won. Actually, they played, I guess, against the Lakers, if I'm not mistaken. It was a final game, one of those. But anyway, you know, I've suffered enough. I had to get to a point where I told myself I cannot allow my emotions to take over like this. Right. So guess what? When I'm on the field and I'm doing my thing, I just focus on what the camera is seeing. I do my stuff and I go home because I can die early, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I tell him. I say, you're too sensitive. Like, you're right. just too sensitive. He used to be in L.A. as a comedian. And, yeah. Uh, but the uh, slings and arrows and all the lies and because this this business can be pretty dirty at times. And Absolutely. He, was trying to make it, he had to go back home, but he did started to uh, uh, hook up with cruise ships, and so he started to do that. And he's traveled all over the world continually uh, doing oh, uh, comedy yeah. on on those cruise ships. So, oh, wonderful. Oh, Mitch. Wonderful. Let's talk movies a little bit, you know, and, and I know that we can go back and forth. Uh, you know, the whole football thing is excruciating, man. You know, I, I, I yeah, I'm just, just happy about my shirt. That's how, I got it. <laughs> That's how we found ourselves over there. Absolutely. But it's good to see you. It's good to have you with all the experience that you have. How long have you been acting? I've been acting close to mm, 45 years, 40 years, 45 years. I've been acting basically all my life, actually. All your I, life. I got into I was doing it when I was in one time there was in elementary school. Now this is this is really deep. Yeah. Because the stars aligned for me. I come from like a tough city, Detroit. And right, all right, they right. care about is the factory and, yes. and, and making cars and any yeah. job that you had, you were related to the factory. But I was yeah. fortunate enough. My parents are from Atlanta. They were both educated. My father went to Morehouse. Mm -hmm. My oh, went to in Atlanta, Stone, yeah. And they yeah. met there. Father went to a little stint in the army, then came in with the GI Bill, moved to Detroit. Right. But and but nobody there really cared about theater. It was about singing, Motown. Right, right. Everybody Motown. was on the yeah. corner singing, trying mm -hmm. to get part, to be a part of that. And Stevie, well, you see Stevie Wonder, you see the Temptations driving yes. through your yes. neighborhood. It was a deep, deep time. Yeah. Well, I was. My father wanted to be a great orator, and mm. he, was, he he admired Martin Luther King, you know, and uh, and so one day our science teacher gave us a book to read sections of a book and yeah. bring it back to class. Yes, and uh, having you know kind of gone over it and tried to uh, read it in front of the class, and we all had sections. Mm. Well, my father. <laughs> Well, my father heard me kind of going over the book, and he said, no, yeah. <laughs> feeling into it. 
You want to be a great orator. You want to be, you know, and so instead of, you know, just me just reading it as uh, the, the the steel fell into the the uh, the pit and, and right. it was very hot and da da da. It was like uh, you know, the, uh, inertia <laughs> is the property of right. matter right. that remains in uniform motion mm. unless acted upon by an external force. And, wow. and my uh, my teacher said, "Wait, man, hold on, hold on, stop yeah. that. Do that again." Yeah. And she, I did it again, and then they brought the principal in. And really? Said, Listen to this. And I did it, read it for the principal. And he said, we kind of going to direct you toward theater. And that's how it was from even elementary. So I, I started being in the plays. I got in plays in junior high and high school. I had no desire to do anything except I love sports. And I played a lot of basketball. My best friend who actually had a pro career, his name is yeah. Ralph Simpson. Uh -huh. He had a pro career. He ended up being in the pros. He was 6'5", uh, but gifted, uh, gifted shooter. And uh, he was cool with Spencer Haywood. They went, Spencer Haywood, I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah, But Spencer Haywood is a Hall of Famer. Yeah. We all went to the high school. Spencer was a little older, but Spencer went on uh, wow. to become a Hall of Fame at the NBA. And matter yeah. of fact, that show Winning Time is, uh, they, they, they portray Spencer in that, in that show because at one point he was part of the Lakers. So yeah. our high school, all that came from my high school. So uh -huh. I loved basketball, but I was always in the theater. So after, afterwards, uh, toward the end of high school, my, my father, I said, well, I had a partner. And this, I said, let's be, he wanted to be a comedian and yeah. go around and, uh, and, and work in Detroit as a comedian. Yeah. And uh, my mother was, you know, she was not hearing that. What? Going to clubs and whatever? No, you're going to go to college. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and so my friend went, he went to New York. His name is Herbert Rice. Yeah. He actually got, um, he actually started doing well in New York. He was writing for Saturday Night Live a little bit. Then he ended up, uh, he got in a piece in a movie, which is still a classic movie called Apocalypse Now. He had one yeah. scene yeah. that yeah. stopped the movie. Wow. But, we, I went on and then went to Michigan State University, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. went through that and graduated with a degree in theater. I just yeah. thought of it that way. Then went to New York and struggled and suffered and yeah. was homeless, the whole thing. Yeah, the whole so, night, yeah. Yeah, but ended up, I got a break in a movie called Three Days of the Condor. Mm. I mean, you were born then, but that was like in 1974. Five, it was released, but 1974. Right. Uh -huh. well, you, you were in your front yard, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> we can't, you know, we can't ask when to be born. You know what I mean? <laughs> but with Robert Redford, and yeah. I have the last name on that credit, T. Yeah. So he gave me my Screen Actors card. Yeah. And from there, uh, I got, to, and it was funny. I had a nice relationship with Robert Redford, and Faye Dunaway was also the star of that movie. And that right. movie became a classic. And yeah. then I started with my screen actors because I was doing small roles in different movies like The Front with Woody Allen. Yeah. Uh, I was in Taxi Driver, yeah. small role where I was throwing eggs at the car. Yeah. It I doesn't matter. You did it. Work. Yeah. And then finally, I got a screen test for that movie, Apocalypse Now. And there was two people on the plane. They mm -hmm. picked us from New York to run for this character. Yeah. They threw me out here, and then this other guy it was me and this other guy. Oh, I thought I was going to get the role. Yeah. But the other guy was named Lord Fishburne. I don't know if you might have wow, heard of him. Of course, of course. Yeah. Oh, my oh, God. Well, the rest is here. Are you serious? I can see it. I remember it like yesterday. Wow. The guy went, I went <laughs> sit in the waiting room, and the guy brought us all out there to LA. That was yeah. the first time me being in LA. And, and the guy would. And uh, and and I would Lawrence Fishburne would do his audition first and come out, yeah. and Francis Ford Coppola would have his arm around the oh, that, was so <laughs> that was so good. Next, right. next. <laughs> so it was like I knew I didn't I didn't have a chance. Yeah. But yeah. it was I thought I took that. I had been doing a small. Uh, I had a little TV series for yeah. the yeah. Um, Math Channel. 
in New York. And I took my little money and said, well, I need to come out here and get some more film on myself. And then yeah. I go back to New York, maybe hopefully get on Broadway, or whatever, and have yeah. significant roles because I'll have a little bit more, be more visual. Well, I got out here and yeah. I was lucky. I got a co-commercial and then I got the Jeffersons. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, my but God. It was just a, it was just one, one show. Yeah. And uh, where the I doors. played a guy named Jason King yeah. uh -huh. who uh, gave George Jefferson a scroll because he had, he had helped the help center that Louise Jefferson was working at. And yeah. he, so I gave him a scroll. Well, the producers liked that so much. They called my house before the show was even aired and said, mm. we think we want to give him a series. This is why, as you continue, brother, this is why we love to interview people. Because when I see you, when folks see you, you know, on a small screen, a big screen, they don't understand the struggle, you know, right. that you have to go through to, to be who you are today. Because you always have a smile on your face and they don't know the pain and the suffering, like you say, that you have to go through to be who you are. But continue on. I know in the interest of time, we're almost running out of time. But okay, I, I don't want to I'll, I'll, I'll skip through, but <laughs> the Jeffersons, uh, yeah. it turned out. Well, for me, the rest is history. I did it four years as yeah. a character, Marcus Henderson. Uh, you know, now you got Google if you're too young. Yeah. But yeah. See it. And, and I did that and then went on. And, and from there, I had national notoriety. So I started working a lot. I started opposite Betty Davis in a movie yeah. called White Mama, Betty Davis. I'm the only one to ever star opposite her, the only black man to have wow. her as a leading lady. Uh, and, and then I went on. And I've been in like at least 60 movies. Uh, I have a, uh, a white man can't jump. This is our thirtieth yes. anniversary, thirtieth year yeah. anniversary, yeah. and I had a lead in that. And and also the uh, I have one now called Sweetwater. I'm doing. Uh, yeah. It's about the first black to be signed in the uh, the NBA. Absolutely, and this is a period piece done in the fifties, uh, uh, early fifties, late forties. And I'm playing his high school coach, Sweetwater Clifton. If you Google him, you'll realize yeah, yeah. he signed for the New York Knicks. Yeah. And then I have some other things I just, real quick, yeah. like Peach Ander DeBose. Again, I'm in one of her films as well. It's a film that's going out and it's really uh, winning a lot of awards right now. Yeah. And, and that's called Bus Stop. And uh, Bus Stop. Okay. he directed it and uh, it's really getting a lot of uh, publicity in play. And Absolutely. so. Staying busy, and I'm really happy about this sweet water. I think if next year you'll start seeing the it's for Warner Brothers, so you'll start yeah. seeing the yeah. Uh, anytime you have uh, the the notoriety of the Warner Brothers, you know, then everybody's like paying attention. You know? Yeah, you'll see your basketball season next year. You'll start yeah. seeing all the commercials. And oh, that's season. good. That's, and that's so, uh, Richard Dreyfus is starring, and I have yeah. a good role in it too. Yeah. No, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate all your passion, you know, looking through, you know, your history and what you've gone through, you know, just to, to be here. It's uh, it's amazing. I think we need, if, if the rest of the cast, you know, agree, we need to do, you know, a part two or something, because I know there's so much information. That God we is good, <laughs> man. Just all that. And, it, and, and, and Mark has even said it. It'll yeah. be up and down and many yeah. times, but you know, and you yeah. feel like you want to quit, but don't. Yeah. And that's just what I can tell anybody, believe me. Cause, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I don't want to let you go until I get this out of you, you know, for someone who's watching you right now and they feel discouraged and uh, they, they're thinking, oh, man, it took him 40 years to get to where he is. You know, uh, what would you say to someone who's thinking, you know, that's too long? I don't think I have the stamina to wait all that long. You know, what well, has changed over time that you can advise? Well, let me just tell you this. Yeah. I I didn't stop living. But yeah. I, I got <laughs> I started getting the success Preach. <laughs> way before 40 years. I got success. And I was in my 20s. I was 21 when I got to Jefferson's. Yes. yes. So it can happen a lot quicker. I just didn't die. I yeah. just continued and, <laughs> and continued to work. It's You're not a work in progress. Too. I'm a work yeah. in progress right now. Yes. I'm a part of a group called the Actors Studio. Yeah. And even though we present scenes there, they never say, oh, yeah, that was great. No, yeah. they say, that was a nice rehearsal. They yeah. never want to say it's a finished product because you're always growing. You're always striving to be better. 
Man, I love that. I love that, man. You know, I can't wait to to speak to you again as we bring you back with the rest of the cast. You know, I know that, uh, you know, time is not on our side, but we're trying to <laughs> prolong it as much as we can so we can get everything out of everyone as much as we could. But I appreciate you, man. You know, keep up the good work. You know, I, when I look at your body of work, I was going through your IMDb and I'm like, oh, man, you know, all these names of folks that you've worked with, it's incredible. But just briefly, you know, how was your experience working with uh, folks on uh, this uh, project? Project, heavens are revenge they were great you yeah. know I, they were so respectful and i love them and, and you know i watched the i watched the movie a couple of times it, it's it i was have to take a deep breath because boy you know it makes it makes you a little bit afraid of getting into a relationship <laughs> <laughs> I, say, I play i play the lisa's father right but I, I i do have to i have to question one thing yeah you know, the father the father left the family. Uh -huh. but her mother, see, right. the mother was the one that was sort of the culprit that drove the father away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. he loved the young girl. I yeah. just never quite understood. But then, why would she have such a a, a bad taste in her mouth about men? Even if they're right, were, right, right. A lot of people can relate to that, though. She was, you know, she was beautiful. Just yeah. Get another guy. No, but you know, I wish it was that simple, though. You know, and that goes both ways too. Because even for us, you know, sometimes you could you could have all the money, you could have all the, right. <laughs> the looks, but you I know, mean, I could see it. I could kind of see it if she was homely. Right. You, say, <laughs> right. you say, oh well, boy, I was lucky to get this guy. I'll never get right. anybody else. But hey, you know, you walk outside looking like that, you're gonna right. have light, yeah. light. Like yeah, yeah. But so, but you I know, mean, that's just my. I don't know. I, yeah. It's a lot deeper than that. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I got you. I got you. You know, no, you know, for me, I was watching the movie and I'm thinking, oh, Marcus is about to die. You know, I'm waiting for you to, I was ready for him to die because, you know, always they kill the <laughs> brother has to be killed somehow. So I was, I was waiting for him to be done, you know, but, uh, you know, it was a good ending. I love the movie. So <laughs> yeah, and we're going to transition on. When we come back, we're going to get the chance to speak to, uh, we have a couple more folks that are waiting you know, in the back end here. So okay. we will bring in Sean and please hang tight with us. We'll be right back and we want to talk so you can meet the rest of the cast. I know you haven't seen each other in a while now, so stay tuned and uh, thank you for being here. Hey, no, thank you for having me. All right, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm David Shiro, live here at Channel ATV. We are having a great conversation with the cast from the movie Heaven's Revenge. You know, everybody's best in LA right now, but, uh, you know, they are in different locations. And this brother is actually transitioning, moving. So we're going to bring him in. Uh, brother Sean, it's good to see you, man. How are you doing, sir? Lessons. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. How you doing? I am doing wonderful. You got a lot of technology, right? You had a little bit of a challenge there, but uh, you made it. Yes, sir. You know, we got to show up. There's a will, there's a way. You know, absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. So I know that you, you're naturally gifted. You can act, you can produce, you can do all types of stuff, you know, but, you know, um, what's your story? If somebody is tuning in right now, you know, what do you want them to know about you? All right. My story is deep rooted in a rich soil, man. I come from South Jamaica, Queens, born and raised New York oh, City, okay. um, you know, raised amongst the legends, the game changers in hip hop, like Run DMC. Mm -hmm. um, they call me the nephew of hip hop um, due to wow. the fact that, you know, my uncle uh, Larry Smith was the producer um, of Run DMC, Beastie Boys, Fat Boys, Curtis Blow. Yeah. Beastie Boys on, you know, the, the list goes yeah. on. So yeah. me having that firsthand, you know, experience, um, yeah. getting it firsthand, that's what rubbed off on me yeah. at the age of maybe I say 11, 12. I was watching Run DMC in the other room record Raising Hell, the album. So you can imagine what that's doing to a kid. That was oh, like, yeah. of course, that was like the Beatles in the hip, you know, in, in, in the music business back yeah. then. So, yeah. 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 That's cool, man. That's cool. So, you know, what are your thoughts? Because when you move from uh, from the East Coast, New York specifically, you move to L.A., it's a whole different game. You know what I'm saying? Just, a, the, you know, the way people look at life, it's kind of the same, but it's different. You know what I'm saying? Hollywood is a whole different beast. Yeah. You know, 
uh, being also raised, you know, on the streets, like you said, you know, where, where do you get the, the passion and the motivation just to to change with time? Because as we know, you know, over the other over the period of time, technology has changed. The way movies are produced has changed. You know, all these things are changing. So how have you adjusted yourself from, you know, growing up from the streets like that and also having a lot of success in your family and looking at folks that are successful to where you are now? Um, basically, well, well, to, 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 to go back to what you said, um, when I left New York city, I, I moved to Atlanta. Okay. Um, I moved to Atlanta like 96, 97. Okay. That's okay. when the hip hop scene was growing in Atlanta. Um, right. Atlanta really didn't have they sound, you know, yeah. you had one group like outcasts, yes. you know, even though they had booty shaking music back then, but I was yeah. in the forefront in Atlanta when yeah. Freaknik first hit, you know, that, that 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 whole scene just burst and I was there breathing yeah. life into it. Mm -hmm. Um and was blessed um to you know get a job working with Keith Sweat, you know, Keith yeah. Mitchell from After Seven became a writer, ghost writer. Yeah. And um, you know, started pursuing my career in music then. But I always had the passion before then, just yeah. never really to be in front of the camera like that because I came <laughs> from it. So I was yeah. always up close and, and around it. Right. So so just being there, um, I was already a part of hip hop. I was already a made man at a young age. True. It just took the, the when the passion really grew on me is when my cousin, Mr. Cheeks, salute yeah. from the Lost Boys, yeah. um, they started doing the park jams. Yeah. And he was one of the main ones that inspired me. I got to give him that. Um, just seeing that 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 crowd control and, mm -hmm. when he, you know, channel, you know, the, the the parties and had everybody else on that same wavelength and accord. Yeah. That's what I fell in love with music and I became a writer. Yeah. And then I started DJing um, Jam Master J, watching him yeah. DJ all the time. I remember asking him, I said, yo, Jay, can you show me how to transform? Right. And we were in Larry Smith house and Hollis down there. And, and, and um, I forgot, I, I'll never forget. He showed me how to transform. Yeah. From there, I became a DJ. I used to make blend tapes in the hood in South Jamaica, Queens, South Ozone Park. Um, they called me S1. Yeah. You no, know, that was my DJ name. So I got inspired just full of passion back then, just being around the whole music scene. The whole yeah, the whole industry. Yes. And then when I left Atlanta, um, yeah. I said, you know what? I done all I could do here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I left, I moved from Atlanta in 2004, mm -hmm. came to LA. I said, I'm yeah. gonna try this acting thing. And the acting thing came, that didn't, that didn't even come, that wasn't planned. I was coming yeah. out here to sign a record deal with Interscope. Okay. They called me and my manager and said, yo, we want to sign, you know, sit down with you. We like what we hear. I have my own album independently in stores in Tower Records. It was called Inside of Me. We did that. We, you know, me and my team, we, we, we made sure we just hit the pavement. That's back yeah. then when we were selling CDs out the trunk. Y'all yeah. yeah, remember that grind. Yeah. Most don't remember that grind. Yeah. Now well, it's all yeah. instant. It's instant, you know, one button, one button. Yeah. We was actually uh -huh. hit the pavement, touching the people, getting yeah. out there. So that's when I just realized, you know what? I can do this acting thing because yeah. as I was writing, it became so vivid to me. And I, I'm, I'm a vivid writer. And my music became scripts. Mm. And as as I started writing more, the details started coming about. That's when I started channeling how to remember lines, scripts, because you gotta remember I'm an artist. So improv was my thing. I can get on stage and just rock a crowd right then and there. Um and that's a gift. That takes a certain gift, man. Um, yeah, yeah. But you're, you're very gifted, and uh, you know, I think I love what you what you just said. You know, the balance and the transform the transformation from uh, being uh, you know a regular cat from the street, you know, becoming a DJ and becoming an artist, and then into movies finally. So all these things mm -hmm. are somehow connected. If you look, yes. if you see what I'm saying, they are connected because yes be a movie without sounds. You know, that's mm -hmm. why you have to control, right. Mm -hmm. So you know, um, how would you define music? Best, best on uh, you know the the whole West Coast East Coast thing. You know, from your perspective, you know, what would what what would you choose? Would you do both styles? You know, the hardcore hip hop from you know the the, the East Coast or the the West Coast? What what's what what's your preference? For I you? got I got to remain authentic to me. I'm a I'm a beast from the East, man. I'm from South Jamaica, Queens, New York yeah. City, man. I don't know how to be nobody else but S one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The hazardous okay. came about because I was always hazardous to the competition. That's why they call me S one hazardous. Mm -hmm. But then I had to break it down. And I had to get to the point where it was like some has it, some don't. 
And yeah. that was the talent. That was the passion. That was the discipline. That was the skill. Yeah. So that's why you see the has always in the middle of Sean has McDonald. And it's right. funny, my first movie, I spoofed P. Diddy. Um, mm. It's called Epic Movie. Okay. And this, this was crazy because I'm now, mind you now, I'm coming off the music thing, right? The, the, the deal didn't go as planned yeah. when I first moved to California. They wanted to shelf me. And I guess the fact that I knew too much of the business as a kid, yeah. Um, I was kind of spoiled. I, I knew what I wanted, knew what I didn't want. So right. um, my first film got my SAG card, got my name in the credits. Epic movie. I spoofed P. Diddy. Yeah. And um, that felt kind of crazy because I'm like, wow, this is the music world I'm coming from. <laughs> and then right. my big international commercial comes right after that. And it's yeah. a rap commercial. Yeah. And I'm rapping about education. You know what hmm. I'm saying? So I made a lot of billions and billions of kids go back to yeah. school. You want to get their education online. That's important. And, uh, then you had Lil' Romeo after me. Yeah. You know, I, so I did reality TV um, just to throw that in there. Mm -hmm. um, Real World was the first reality show popping, right? Yeah. And then me, I went, got with BET, MC Light, and the staff over there. And we decided yeah. to do a MC show called The Boot. Yeah, what you're doing. Actually, she's the voice that you hear on BET announcing. There you, know, there you go. There you yeah. go. I see and that it. was called the boot. Yeah. yeah, so we did that, have fun with it. And then you next next thing you know, I see Ray J Love. Yeah. I see Flavor Love. I see all yeah. these shows coming out, kind of, yeah. you know, um catapulting yeah. what we did. Yeah. Um the show wasn't successful. It was like a couple runs on BT, yeah. they let it go. But yeah. the fact that everything kind of revolved around music for me was a blessing. Yeah. Amen. Amen to that, man. I am so proud of you, man. You know, it's, a, you, it's such a such a, a refreshing, you know, thought just to think because I'm surrounded by cats who are, you know, in the music thing. I'm, I'm surrounded mm -hmm. by cats who have made it and cats who are trying to get up, <laughs> even those who are just dreaming. You know what I'm saying? It's so a when, grind, man. It's a hustle. It's it a is a grind, big time. Yeah, it's a grind. Mm -hmm. it's a grind. Mm -hmm. What would you say right now? First of all, before even transition, I want to shout out uh, Miss Lean C. Holder, who just uh, commented there. She just gave you some hearts here as you're speaking. I want to shout Hello. out Christina, who uh, commented there. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, Marcus, you know, some of the folks were talking about you here in the comments. And, uh, of course, our very own Jenny Jones, you know, also watching and, uh, you know, seeing how the transformation is going from one, one person to the next. Mm -hmm. You know, but, uh, you know, salute, so, uh, salute to my cast members. Definitely, man. Uh, they, came, they showed up and showed out. Yeah, it's it's one family, man. It's one family. So, mm -hmm. you know, speaking about, uh, you know, movies now. So do you prefer the small screen or the, the large screen and why? Uh, you know what? I mean, it. Yeah, I'm. I'm just passionate about the craft, man. I just, I just love what I do, and the fact that we can tell these stories through, yeah. through, through our, our, you know, our, our ideas and paint these vivid pictures and and breathe life into these characters. It, mm -hmm. I, I, I prefer both because I got you know a couple films that we did before the pandemic. It's called yeah. Keys. Um, I I co-star in it. Um, along um, a a, a great cast. You got um Big Red, you know Hawthorne James, member from yeah. the Five Heartbeats. Yes, yes. He, yeah, he plays he plays my he plays my chief, yeah. and um, I play an undercover detective um from New York City, Staten mm -hmm. Island, and he's he's grimy. You know what I'm saying? He come from the streets. Yeah. He's yeah. robbing hustlers. You know all that stuff. And then I did a, just finished a film called The Vagrant, and yeah. I play an attorney. So that was cool. That was a shift for me it's coming from a crooked cop. Uh -huh. Yeah, now I go to an attorney. Okay. So I love just channeling different characters. And let me, let me tell you something. Yeah. I done took so many shows. If you see, you know, if you look at my IMDb, I done had a spurt of different, you know, um, um, highlights in my career where it was just just a little bit, right? You see me, you see yeah. me, you got to see me get the familiar, but people haven't got really familiar with me just yet because I'm just getting warmed up. And if you see on my IMDb, I got over 59 credits, right? Yes, and the, 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 yeah. the fact that this business, and let me tell you something, a lot of people come to this town thinking I'm going to get rich overnight. I'm going to come, I'm going to come oh, and success. It don't happen that way. Some, for some it do. And when it does happen, they don't appreciate it. They fly by night. That's you right. know, the people right. that really put the work in, the grind, like, you know, Mark yeah. was saying earlier um, about just having that passion to even want to take classes. Because a lot of people think it's just a natural thing. Oh, I could do it. I can, I can act. I can remember lines. No. 
it's a whole technique that comes along with this. Mm-hmm. So, right. and I had to, I had to get that because yeah, I can't yeah, that yeah. now. You know what I'm saying? Being on stage my whole life, performing. Yeah. So to transition into that, like to answer your question, I prefer both big screen and small screen. Yeah, that's okay. I love it. I love the answer. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, so we, when we are passionate about something, you know, sometimes we take it for granted. I'll give you uh, an example of myself. You know, I, you already know I cover, you know, the NFL games, right? So mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, when you're doing that, when I'm in the moment, you don't quite appreciate it until when I, when I sit down and I'm watching it on TV, mm-hmm. I'm watching it on TV. That's what, because now I can see it from a different perspective. Yes. And then when, when the season yeah. over, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, sometimes I miss, you know, silly things such as the smell of the grass. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I miss yeah. the smell of the grass you know, on the football field. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I miss the crowd, you know, the crowd, because when you're on the field, it's a different angle. Yeah, That's- it's, a, it's a whole, it's a whole different frequency, it's a whole different energy. And to uh, touch on what you said, yeah, too, I think it's like this with far as the business. You, 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 I, I tell kids today to learn everything about the business, right? Learn the behind the camera, learn in front of the camera, editing, all of that, because a lot of times we keep ourselves in this box, and that's yeah. why I tell people don't. Don't, don't just label me an actor. Don't yeah. just label me an artist. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm Superman of many talents. Right. And I want you know what I'm saying because <laughs> I, 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 yeah, there's no limit. There's no ceiling on what I can do. Oh, and yeah. the fact that I, I wrote this song, Circus of Love, mm-hmm. two years before this film even happened, yeah. because I went through a real situation, sort of like a fatal attraction type of vibe. Right. Right. And right. The film just lined up. It just, at the oh. stars line. Uh, the the song is called Circus of Love. Yeah, and that's really about the movie. It's the same vibe, you know, bro. Man telling woman he love him. You yeah. know, you know, you, you feed her mind all of this, and then you you know you you do her wrong and you leave a woman scorned. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I think that's that was like right on time with with, with everything he was doing. But I tell kids never give up, man. My whole thing is to touch, move, and inspire people. That's it. If I touch you, I move you, I inspire you, I did my job in this business. I love your energy, brother. I love your energy, and I'm excited about your future, man. You know, I can't wait for us to connect, you know, definitely when I'm back in L.A., you know, next week and stuff like that. So uh, as we uh, don't, please don't leave because we're about to bring in uh, all the cast, you know, so you can have a dialogue. I know you miss your brothers and sisters. (laughs) You haven't seen them in a while. But I, I want to do that. So um, as we transition on, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, uh, feel free to comment. You know, I know you're taken by the stories that, you know, you're listening to. But these are folks who are here sharing and pouring what they've gone through. Please learn something from them. So, Brother Sean, you know, it's a pleasure, man, having you here. And uh, we almost you. have. So please hang out in the back real quick. We'll be right back. And uh, we'll talk to our next and final. We serve the best for the last. <laughs> Jenny coming Thanks up. Soon. Yes, Thanks. sir. All righty. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Channel ATV. This is Davis live here at the studio. I am so excited to have this last one here. Jenny is one of the folks that you're going to find very interesting because of uh, what she loves to do. Let's bring in Jenny here real quickly. Jenny, it's good to see you and it's good to have you as you join us in the studio here. For the folks that are joining you right now, watching you from all over the world, you know, what do they need to learn about you? I know your IMDb. I've checked it out. I've seen your <laughs> social media. You know, what do you have to say to the folks that are watching you right now? So... Um, hi to everyone. Thanks for having us on. I uh, really, truly appreciate being here. And um, I, I think, you know, to sort of dovetail what Marcus was talking about, right. I I started off, you know, I, I, I've been in entertainment over 30 years. My, my entire life, my first wow. job, I was eight years old and it was dancing on a stage in front of, you know, 3,000 people 
at mm -hmm. the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion and the Orange County Performing Arts Center. Yeah. And I had to get a work permit and I had to rehearse for an entire season. And yeah. I had to miss school and get out of school early and take the train up to LA to go do the show. And it was all very exciting. I grew up here in Southern California. And to me, the stage is my home. Yeah. So when I when I'm on stage, when I'm performing, it's when I'm personally most comfortable as a human being. Yes. And I became a professional dancer at a very young age. I was a professional dancer. I was a professional competitive snowboarder all through high school. Mm -hmm. um, when I decided to go to college, in between going to college, high school and college, I started directing. And my passion for directing was very early. I was probably 17. I directed a Samuel Beckett play called Crap's Last Tape. That was the first thing I ever directed. Um, if any of you on here know theater, you know that's a very challenging play. Right. And I fell in love with Beckett material. So I started off directing Samuel Beckett plays and really obscure uh, plays at a young age. I moved to New yeah. York. I went to Fordham University. I double majored in English literature and theater directing. Uh, I worked in off-Broadway theater. I was stage managing, running light boards. Like all through college, I was working. I was a working professional. I would go to school. I would take the train downtown. I'd be at dance class. It was just like nonstop working while bartending and trying to get it. <laughs> so, you know, that, that was kind of my experience living in New York. Yeah. And I went to California Institute of the Arts up here in Valencia. I got my master's degree in directing for film, theater, and television. Right. After that, I went and started working as a development executive. So I spent a little over 15 years maybe working as a development executive mm -hmm. uh, at indie companies. I worked at companies like Stars Media. I worked at the film department, Exclusive Media. I worked on a lot of big feature films. I worked on that yeah. film Rush with Chris Hemsworth. Um, so basically, I've seen from a 360 viewpoint, you know, how films get made. At yeah. that time, I was working 60 plus hours a week. I would read anywhere from 20 to 30 screenplays a week. My weekends were spent reading screenplays, developing screenplays, working with A plus directors, yeah. looking at dailies, giving notes on dailies, you know? So I was really like in the feature film world working um, and I was miserable because I was being creative and I was exerting yeah. all my little creative energies and brains and time. and. Um, I wasn't actually creating anything that was mine. I wasn't actually using my voice. I wasn't using my artistic talents. You know, I would get to dance class at like 8.30 at night if I could, mm -hmm. you know, dance till 10 p.m., get up for a 7 a.m. conference call. Like, um, and finally, at some point, I came to a breaking point. And it was when I had a job where I had a little more bandwidth. Uh, I started writing again, and I started writing screenplays. Yeah. And it was dipping that toe back into finding my own voice, where I sort of realized, you know, you can work on movies and not be artistic or creative. And there are a ton of people in this town with great jobs. I was one of them. You have health benefits, you get a company card, you get blow to can, it's great. Like yeah. you go all over the world working on movies and you work in Hollywood. Right. But that doesn't make you an artist and it doesn't mean you're making art. And so for yeah. me, when I went back to screenwriting and back to directing, I really quickly found my path, you know, it was like, yeah. I said I was going to do this thing and immediately I was lined up for, for some you know, rewriting some feature yeah. films. Yeah. Um, I don't think I, I can't hear you right now, but okay. let me see. Um, well, but yeah, so I'll just, I can't hear you. You can't? Um, can you hear can, me okay? I can hear you. Yeah, yeah I can, can hear you. Hear me. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, so I started writing feature, you know, writing feature films, directing, um, I directed a play, it was a one woman show, and we won an NAACP award for it, which was for me a highlight, but also sort of, not that I need validation, but it was validation that I was headed down the, the right, right path. path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I started directing and writing and I haven't looked back. Uh, I've done a lot of consulting work on feature films. There's a lot of people who don't get credited on things, but yeah. they, tell people how to fix their scripts and tell people who to cast and do all kinds of things like that. Right, so, right. Um, you know, as a performer, I perform two to three times a week. Um, I create hip hop music. I am an MC. I host shows. I'm really um, involved in the underground hip hop scene here in LA. And when I go to New York there, yeah. and I also um, 
host a weekly hip hop radio show too. So I'm all over the place, but I will tell you, I'm always busy. (laughs) And everyone who came before me, you know, all the castmates who are amazing, everyone who came before me said the same thing, which is it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And I can honestly say that, like, to anyone watching, it's all work. This is work right now being on here. Absolutely. We're here to promote a beautiful movie we all worked on together. It's a Monday night. Yeah. We're still working. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So, absolutely. Um, I can't hear you for some reason. I don't know if you're on mute. Go, go ahead and log off and log back in. Uh, it's okay. going to help out. Yeah. So go ahead. Okay. And there we go. Can you hear me now? Yes, right. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. yeah so sorry. Was... Yeah. It's okay. So you, you talked about the hard work that's put in behind scenes and things like that. And that's something that you guys have in common, all of us, matter of fact. The consistency, you know, a lot of hours, you know, without looking at the financial aspect of it, you know, per se, you know. But for you, uh, uh, let, let's take a different turn. You know, uh, now the, the, the days are different. The years are different. The pandemic came. Before the pandemic, you know, we were dealing with, you know, acting and, and producing and, and doing all these different things in a different way. But now, so what adjustment have you made after yes. the pandemic? You know, when you just zero. So you're still doing zero. the same thing the same way you I'm still working probably even harder because okay. now the work has come into the home. So, okay. you know, so things, for example, I'll give you a good example, pitch meetings. Right. I'm a right. creator. I have um, a couple of TV shows and I have two feature films I'm attached to direct right now. Yeah. So all those meetings in olden times if we were going to go to the studio you know we would leave our house and go drive to burbank or wherever and take the meeting wherever you know sit in traffic and now (laughs) it's so convenient it's all on zoom or wherever you know that i i find that it's actually even harder to separate yourself from the work in these times and i've i've found that you know during the pandemic i was still doing live shows two three times a week whether it was me hosting a show for other artists to give them a platform, you know, I was still doing my radio show. I was still doing everything I was doing. And in fact, I shot a ton of, uh, including Heaven's Revenge. I worked on a lot of movies during the pandemic because all these places are making more content than ever. So I actually found that I was out of my house on set for most of the pandemic, you know, which was good and bad, you know, I think, um, being employed is always great as an artist so for me it's like i'm happy when i'm working right Uh, when people say let's hang out to anyone watching if you have time to hang out you're not trying hard enough Mm, yeah i don't don't know what it means to hang out people let's hang out like hang out hang out and do what are we gonna read something together are we gonna write together are we gonna throw like when i get on the phone with marcus for example yeah you know the producer of the film uh, I love Marcus. I could talk to Marcus and hang out with Marcus for probably days, but right. he and I are immediately going in on what's that the next be. thing we're going to yeah. work on together. What yeah. is, and I don't have time for people who aren't here on earth to create, to bring positivity, to share voices, to yeah. share stories, to understand each other. Like we're here to understand each other. That's yeah. why we're on earth. Absolutely. On that note, uh, you know, so, somebody, somebody has some compassion for you. They're saying uh, they want to hang out with you. Shout out to this inside. He's saying, let's hang out. Maybe he's trying to give you a little break, you know, so you don't have to be working all the time. But I hope don't that- get me wrong. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I have plenty of fun in my life. Right, the right, right. The difference is if you don't find this fun, mm-hmm. you don't need to be in the entertainment industry. Gotcha. Because because when I go, you know, when I go drive an hour or two hours to go do a hip hop show and I am driving there, I'm prepping, I'm yeah. getting on stage, I maybe rehearse, yeah. you know, whatever the scenario is, if that's not fun to you, yeah. you need to go find a different job. Because that's right. part of the job, even going on stage, people don't realize this. I think actors, a lot of actors out there don't realize this. When you're going to do a film, for example, mm-hmm. you know, you have to maybe change your appearance some way, yeah. right? That may take time. You may have to go on a special diet, a workout thing, whatever. You have to learn all your lines. You have to research all of the film. You have to, I mean, there's so much work that goes into it. And then if it's theater, you've got to rehearse. Like you have to, you know, I did a dance show last weekend. I'm a professional dancer still. I still dance in multiple jazz companies here. Mm -hmm. And I did a three minute dance. I rehearsed for six months for that three minutes on stage. I did a solo, three minutes. I heard for six months. And when people, when people in LA or, you know, younger generation, I don't want to throw anyone. I'm not, I'm very young. I'm 24. 
right. and now they're casting. Yeah, I was gonna, yeah, five, yeah 24 but, months, yeah, 40 years 24. Ago. 24. But to anyone right. out there, like I've heard people say to me, you know, if this acting thing doesn't work out in four years or five years, I, my, when, when people tell me like, what advice do you have for actors? I'm mm -hmm. like, do a moral inventory of yourself. If there's anything else on earth you can do that you kind of enjoy, do yeah. that instead. Yeah. yeah. If you want to make money, go be something else because this right. is not a business where you get to in my mind, ever take your foot off the gas. Like, right. I don't know what it means to take your, I go on vacations, don't get me wrong. I do yeah. all kinds of fun things in my life, but like, there's always an undercurrent of like, you know, like if you're working up for, if you're working on a feature film, right? The fastest right. I've ever seen a movie go into production is like a year. That's cool. like, that's the fastest. Yeah, that's the fastest. Yeah, yeah. Most yeah. things like three years, five years, seven years. There's scripts I wrote ten years ago where the producers yeah. call me up. Oh, hey, we got this going. Okay, great. Tell you five years. You know. <laughs> no, no, I know. You know, I love your energy as well. I love the fact that you're doing so many different things and uh, you have so much energy flowing from left, right to <laughs> back, front. You know, all over the place. Right. That's great. You know. So you know, if somebody's looking at you right now, you know, how would you describe yourself in three words? I uh, just doing my best. Doing your best. Okay. So it sounds like life, like real life, you know, every day, putting Always. your best. Yeah. So like, Jenny like that, that's, you know, when you said legacy, like you asked someone, what do you want their legacy to be? Yeah. And I was thinking that, that like, we all just did our best with the talents yeah. that God gave us, you know, with the time. I always yeah. imagine, this is how I imagine it happening. One day, yeah. I won't be here. Right? Someone somewhere, God, whoever greets me, maybe it'll be my grandma. Shout out to Nan. Yeah. They're going to when I get there they're going to say show us what you learn. Yeah. You've been rehearsing for this moment your whole life. What are you going to do? Are you going to dance? Are you going to sing? Are you going to do it all at once? Are you going to mm -hmm. You know, yeah. what are you going to do? You're going to show us your movie, your book, your kids like what you're you're rehearsing your whole life in my mind is a rehearsal yeah. for when when you no longer can rehearse and that's when your performance is 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 when you've gotten to the peak of your ability in every level i'm just gifted at like i mean sean everyone on here's gifted. i have a bunch of different tools you know yeah, i'm absolutely. sharpening my tools every which every way day. you every know day. Every, every day. day, every day, every day. I danced Absolutely. for three hours today, you know? Absolutely. So now transitioning <laughs> on to the next level, uh, Jenny, before we bring on the, the rest of the cast, you know, um, women have come very far, you know, even in Hollywood, you and I understand, you know, you know, the, the struggles which were there, they're a little bit different. If you're a person of color, the struggles were different. If you're a woman, the, str the struggles are different. So, you know, in, from, from your experience, since you got into the industry, what, what, are, what, what are some of the significant changes that, are, that we've made? to be where we are today? And what do you think still needs to be um, worked on, you know, just uh, to perfect, you know, the position of women in the industry? I think, you know, I think, you know, sh like always shout out to the patriarchy. Mm -hmm. Love you, see you That's all right. out there. Uh, going strong, good job guys. Um, yeah. But, you know, I think that there needs to be a significant mind shift, and this is in all of the workforce, where, Half of the workforce needs to accept that they may need to step aside mm -hmm. and that their jobs are not guaranteed because of their gender or, you know, their identity. And until people start to take ownership of that and really think about why am I giving this person preference? Why am I giving that person preference? I've you know, having been an executive at a bunch of different companies, I can tell you the number of directors lists that I would look at and they would say, oh God, can you just put one woman, put a woman's name on there because there's yeah, no yeah, one on there. Yeah, who do you want to just put one on there? Yeah, exactly. She's not going to do it, you know? Right. And so I would get very discouraged as a director, you know? Mm -hmm. I would think, well, geez, I'm never going to stand a shot at this, you <laughs> right. know, like how, right. ooh. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think that it's not just men, it's women too, right? Correct. Correct. We uphold this this um, this system that does not work, and we've all seen in the past decades it does not work for anyone. So, I I have friends who are male filmmakers, and 
you know, some of the, sometimes like I remember I was talking to a friend about a project I wrote and I was like, why don't you direct it? You know, because I actually thought you'd be a good director. For it. And he was just like, no, I'm going to produce it. You're directing it. You, it mm -hmm. It's upon it's upon women to take the opportunities, but it's also a graceful stepping aside sometimes. Yes. Because I think that a lot of times men don't step aside and it's, it's, it's something as easy as like, you know, for example, um, when I do projects and there's a, a male partner I'm working with, there's always this like deference to the male partner right. and Absolutely. people do it whether they want to or not. It's yeah. just how our culture is. Cause we ask her husband, her partner, her, you know, so people like have this mindset. So I think for all of this to change, mm -hmm. everybody, male and female need to just start acknowledging how they view male, female, well, any, any systemic, yeah thing that's happening right now people right. need to look at how they view it and start to own their position in it i have to look at look if i'm looking at you know action directors or action actors or this role or that i've written this role why mm -hmm. am i writing a man right why is this guy a man i have to do that that's my work right yes and i you know so i'm not like blameless in any of this either you know i have to say <laughs> why am i writing a man yeah. Or why am I, I, I want a cinematographer. Why am I only looking at male cinematographers for my yes, movie? Yes. Why, you know? I like, I like that. It shouldn't matter, right? If, if somebody's talented, it shouldn't come with a, with a label to say, we're looking for a female director or a male director or a short director or a tall director. No, they should only be looking for female directors. Hear me yeah. clearly. You should yeah. only be hiring female directors. Just Can't like stop. we should only be looking at female presidential candidates right there until I, I think it was um rbg said it when yeah. when are there enough supreme court justices who are female when they all are because there's right. always been men right right, right. right. so right. so when every studio head is a female mm -hmm. and when every when every director nominated in the category is a woman then the table will have turned completely correct this correct. is why nothing has changed nothing has changed in my mind I think because, we should try that, Jenny. We should try that. Now, I think I'm going to mandate you with this. You know, in your company, you should try to have like all female, you know, leadership and see how that works out. And then, you know, just uh, everybody picks it up from you and we just keep going. Like Beyonce And there, did, are, there are film sets that do that. There are film yeah, sets yeah. that do that. Or, or you know, just, uh, and I don't want to say all female, I mean, just diversity in general. Got like, it. like, di I mean, go walk Got around. If, if anyone questions this, go walk around a studio and walk around the film set because i've like i said i've been on a lot of film sets <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like you yeah, everyone look around you mm -hmm. who's there and the only film sets where you're like oh wow what's going on here are ones where they have made a very conscious decision of like okay we're gonna make this a diverse set and that means all representation inclusion of everybody you know it doesn't have to be all female it has to be um you know it like it has to be inclusive and and we're not i mean go walk into any you know business and mm -hmm. look around who's in charge yeah. you know who's at the table yeah and 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 look i i work in music too yeah so i can tell you the number of shows i've been at where there have been other female mcs not many <laughs> you know like, so yeah, you, you're, definitely, you're definitely, you know, paving the way. And that's the reason sometimes you may exist for a reason that you don't even understand yourself. But God is putting you in those positions where you can uh, at least start a conversation just like we are doing right now. Somebody, some kid someday is going to be watching this and then, you know, listen to us and say, OK, they're talking about movies. But then it's much deeper than just, you know, reading your script and, and start acting, you know, because you're telling your story. You're also inspiring folks, you know, from a deeper level. So I'm going to buy everybody about three minutes to come back. As, as I allow everybody to get situated, Jenny, go drink some water. When we come back, we're going to bring everybody in so you can actually get a chance to talk to everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We'll be right back here at Channel ATV.
Hello, my name is Russell Alfaro, and I'm the owner and director of Lifted Hypnosis Wellness Center here in Graham, Washington, USA. I'm also the co-owner and mental coach of the Seattle Bombers football team, also here in Washington. Here at Lifted Hypnosis Wellness Center, we do a couple of things. One of the things we do is clinical hypnotherapy. Being able to bring the conscious and the subconscious mind together in order to help the individual perform at their peak in their life. Also, we have a biofeedback machine. I call it a biofeedback machine on steroids. We are able to take a, a peek inside the individual's bodies and be able to, to locate all the different stressors and help relieve the stress that they have in their body. Not only that, our biofeedback machine has quantum technology. Now, with that, we were missing something very, very important. We breathe air. Air is very, very important. Sometimes we don't get enough air that we need in order to heal injuries, be able to clear the toxins out of our body. I'm here to tell you that this here is the future to wellness. One of the things that we love about this multi-hyperbaric chamber is large enough and it helps those individuals that are, that are claustrophobic, that don't like tight spaces. This particular model, multi-chamber, is a four-seater chamber along with a bed. We have two TVs in there. Basically, can take their mind off of what they're doing while they get in their hyperbaric oxygen session. Big up to DC Productions. You don't know Sean Paul, there ain't no second guesting. Taking it to the limit and beyond. You know what I mean? Making them know it's the DC Productions. Got the flow. Yeah, man, keep it locked. Don't yeah. All right, welcome back, everybody. Shout out to Sean Paul there, our longtime friend. Sean Paul has been there from the beginning. We love him. Uh, shout out to everybody who's tuning in right now, watching us. We're getting ready to bring in all the cast from. Uh, you know, the movie Heaven's Revenge. If you haven't seen it, ladies and gentlemen, just go to Tubi. You can find it. It's streaming in all platforms. You know, so we are so excited to have everybody meet for the first time in a long time after they produced the movie. So we are so excited. If you're watching this, please, please consider subscribing to our channel. Consider subscribing to the folks that you're watching right now, you know, getting and giving us, you know, the entertainment, you know, homes that we deserve. We may not even deserve sometimes, but they work hard to produce the movies that we can all enjoy at home. So I'm going to take a short break real quickly as everybody joins in. Stay tuned. As we come back, we'll talk to everyone in closing. We're watching Channel ATV. As a matter of fact, why don't you ask Jackson how it feels to lie to me over and over and over again? <laughs> and now, <laughs> and now every man in the history of men are going to have to, <laughs> to pay for a simple breakup. It's pathetic! You know, I don't think he would like that Why would you like make up a lie like much. that and do something like that? But I, I'm his brother. We brothers, and you know how we get down. I just want to say what's up to him. Just look at him real quick.
All right, thank you for joining us. As you can see, we transition into the theater now because we're going to bring in everybody from their locations to make sure that we can say goodbye and say the final thoughts. Brother Marcus, welcome, my brother. It's good. Thank you so much. Are you having a great time to watch all the folks that you've worked with over the years to just uh, hear their stories and stuff like that? I'm loving it. I was just going to say I'm learning so much about, you know, all, all my people and just so much love is coming through uh, from all of your words. I, it means just so much to have everybody here. Yeah. Um, the ones who uh, couldn't make it today, including uh, the star Lanise Adams, uh, just want you to know that, you know, this was this, this started as a dream for her. You know, this was something yeah. that she wanted to use as a platform to launch her career and in the process. You know, you, you brought so many others with you, um, and I and I definitely look forward to working again with with all of you. And just so excited for this opportunity to, to come together today. So thank you so much, Davies, and thank you all, cast members, um, for being a part of this. Absolutely, man. You know, I, I think uh, you can you can feel. You know, we plan for a shorter period of time, but we just let everybody, you know, say what they need to say. And I think there there might be a need for folks to come back and really, you know, share the stories. Because when you show up doing a movie, you know, you just do your part and off you go. You do your part, and we sometimes we forget that these are folks, these are human beings who have gone through things and struggles and, and and triumphs, you know, and tribulations, if you will. But but we're still going as a community. So I'm very thankful, man, for the opportunity just to you know, you know, share your platform with everyone. So without waiting too much time, you know, let's bring in our brother Robert here. Brother Robert, you know, uh, I know that you have a lot of things going on, but you're still here joining. What have you learned from, you know, listening from others? What have you learned today? I learned a lot, as Marcus <laughs> said. You know, it's, uh, and Ernest and I have known each other many, many years. And yes, fun to hear his story, you know, his, his journey and all of our journeys that are continuing. And yeah. uh and I, uh, so it's been, it's been really wonderful. And I'm, and I'm loving hearing that all of, almost everybody in the group is doing their own films as, as yes. I am too. And I'm, I'm in Oklahoma right now where I've done five movies in the last two years. Yeah. And some big movies, but uh, wow. they're, they're starting, Oklahoma is now starting to compete with Georgia and, and uh, Louisiana and New Mexico for being a, a great place for filmmakers to come. So and throwing that out to my group here that you know whatever projects you're doing you might want to think about oklahoma absolutely that's incredible man that's incredible if you guys are in seattle and you're watching this you can tell you can join this group of uh, wonderful and talented folks uh, you know that there's, there's a lot of people that are trying to break into the movie industry i meet a lot of different talents you know everywhere i go you know robert and uh you know sometimes uh people just need the opportunity you know yeah absolutely, absolutely. yeah they just need the opportunity. And Marcus, for you, if uh, someone is watching this right now and they're trying to get in touch with you, how can they connect with you to get just a little bit of mentorship or even just some sense of direction on where, where they need to go? You know, what would you say? Uh, the best way to reach me is through my production company, Urban Renaissance Entertainment. Right. So you can find me at urbanrenentertainment at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. That's the, my email address. We also have a website, www.urbanrenaissanceentertainment.com. Um, also, you can find me, find me on Facebook, um, either directly as my full name, Marcus Snell Jamal Ham, or Urban Ren Ent, E N T L L C. There you go. There we go. I think they can see it on the on the you know, on the screen there. If, ladies and gentlemen, you're interested to connect with any of these cast to support or to connect, you know, please uh, feel free to reach out to us or Marcus. Like you said, you know, we can uh, um, uh, encourage you at least give you some direction, you know, through the experience. And uh, Robert, I'm excited to bring in uh, your buddy here, brother Ernest. There he is. You know, <laughs> you guys can reconnect. You know, after a long time. <laughs> Yeah, so how does it feel, Brother Ernest, to, 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 to see folks that you've known for many years and that uh, you're still pushing and you're still moving forward? You know, how do you feel? Where's your spirit? And I know you always have a smile, but what? how do you really feel? You know, I'm not always smiling, but I'm smiling <laughs> that I'm on this show. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, it's, great to, it's great to see and hear the stories. You know, uh, Marcus is just, I, I admire him so much. I, I, all the young guys, you know, I'm the old, old guy now, but all right. the guys are coming up and they're doing their movies, they're doing their thing, they're not waiting for anybody to give them anything. And I, correct, I think that is that is powerful, and I, and I love that, you know, they, they said, Hey, we want to do a movie, let's make it ourselves. And right. I think back in my day, we just thought that was 
so a few people were doing it, but uh, we just thought, oh, the expense would be too much. We, yeah. it, it scared us. It shocked us. Right. But now everybody <laughs> is doing that. They can make movies on iPhones. I, I, I just love it. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, and 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 Robert Robert is like you know he's still an inspiration to me, man. He he's always had that drive and that and yeah. that power. He's always up to something, man. <laughs> don't forget me, man. Sometimes you're doing all this stuff. Don't forget your boy. <laughs> yeah, man. yeah, I mean, yeah. I remember. I I, I just a quick story of it. He bought a house back yeah. today. Yeah. I, you, you, you know, I'm a struggling actor. And he said, "Hey, man, I got a little house." <laughs> right. You know what I mean, Robert was just ahead of his. Ahead of his time, man, and love him, you know. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. You gotta love Robert, man. But I'm, I, I'm very, very happy that you guys can reconnect in this fashion. You know, let's bring in uh, Joanne, and Joanne brings a lot of experience as well, and a lot of excitement. We gotta have women that are strong in our medicine. <laughs> so, Joanne, you know, how has been your experience today for you? Um, it's been great. It's exactly what I expected it to be. Just a wealth of wisdom and knowledge right. and experience. Um, most of all, uh, uh, a mutual love of the craft. Yeah. Um, and, and everybody's saying the same thing. It's it's the craft. It's the artistry. It's it's being real. It's being passionate yeah. about it. Um, you know, I, I came into this this field, you know, late in life. Yeah. And I'm okay with that because Absolutely. I'm passionate about this. I, I, I just believe you should love what you're doing and do what you love. And, and I'm experiencing that. And I think Absolutely. some people are, I think some people are afraid of failure and some people are even afraid of success. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think the worst thing you can do is be afraid of experiencing life. Right, right, um, right. I, I don't want to go out with those what ifs, you know, what if I'd done this and what if I'd done that? Do it. Just, you know, go Just for do it. it. Yeah. You know, Just do it. it's work, but, I, you know, it's, it's hard getting dressed up and memorizing those lines. But I tell you what, when you get on set, boom, you don't think about that. Yeah. You know, I gave birth to children. And let me tell you, mm -hmm. I was feeling some pain. But oh, <laughs> my goodness, the joy that comes after. Joy it, comes in the morning, right? Incredible. Same thing. Just just yeah. do it. Yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Don't be afraid. Don't That's be absolutely. afraid of, of your age, of your gender, of your ethnicity, of any disabilities, don't be afraid of anything. Just be afraid of not giving it your all and being who you want to be. That's yeah. what you have to fear. Fear yourself and not giving yourself credit for going for what you want to do. You yeah, know, I, I don't think you could have said it any better. I don't think you could have said it any better. That's uh, very well said, Joanne. And uh, we're going to br bring in uh, Sean here mm -hmm. as well. Sean, thank you for sticking in. You know, I know that uh, you're in the middle of something, but you still made the time to make sure that you reconnect with your friends here. You know, thank you for being here. How was the experience for you? Man, it was a blessing, man. It was a joy ride. Like I said, this journey is never ending. It's always, you know, continuing um everybody showed up on this set man and we you know we all just met on this set everybody's stories was inspiring um just their testimony you know everything we went through you have to be tested to have testimony so once you have the testimony you can testify to somebody else trying to follow behind you and everybody here on this panel was great um i learned a lot from everybody working with them and, you know, the experience is just, I'm, I'm so excited to just, because I know the best days are yet to come. So Amen. I'm excited. I'm just excited for the future, baby. I'm, right. We just getting warmed up. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. We, we, we got to love the passion that Sean brings. <laughs> so, Jenny, we didn't forget about you. So let's welcome you as well, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Hello to everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and Jenny, you know what? What do you think when you when you look at such a talented cast of, of folks, you know, you know, working with you, and uh, you know, how does the future look for you, you know, moving forward? Like I'm looking at the screen, and I think you know, while we all appear in the same movie, this is the first time we've all got to share a screen together. Yes. So this is sort of our ensemble debut together, and absolutely. I'm looking at everyone, thinking of a million different projects that we could all. <laughs> be in together and create together you know and so 
to me, that's the like most exciting thing about doing a project is the people you meet. And I'm I'm truly starstruck by all of you. Like you all make me and hearing what you had to say made me starstruck. And I realized, okay, I've been in a movie with them, but I didn't get to like <laughs> dig in and play with them. Right, so right. now I'm like, I want to go play with all of you. And that's <laughs> right. that's the that to me is most, like that's why we're here. Right? Oh wait a minute. So Jenny, in other words, you, say, you can create a little bit of time to hang out, right? Remember that story that you said earlier? Well, mm -hmm. we were hanging, we're hanging out right now, right? Hanging out right now. That's we're how we work. Right now. <laughs> like, like Jenny said earlier, man, when you love what you do, yeah, it, it's, it's work. Like she said, yo, when the, the moment you stop loving this or you start yeah. feeling anxiety or intimidated or yeah. Go, go get another job. Go, 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 go. Keep your day job. Follow another passion. Cause this right here, it's yeah. it's it's only it's only made for the strong, baby. And your hustle gotta match up. Absolutely. If you ain't got hustle for this, or yeah. you're gonna be on Skid Row downtown, baby. So right. you gotta make sure that you got the passion for this and you corner the market when you're not up because you're gonna have a up and you're gonna have a down in this business. Absolutely. It's a rat race. So Absolutely. but the thing is to embrace it. Love it because as artists, we don't get to embrace the moment because we're always looking for the next, the next, the next. The next, yeah. the next. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we just gotta sit back and smell the roses and the fruit and say, "Man, look how far I've come." And yeah. salute all of you. I, I, I tap my, I tilt my hat to all of you, Marcus. You the man. Thanks for seeing my vision. Thanks for seeing the talent. Big shout out to Lanice. Um, just to give you a little preview, I've, I've won a couple of awards, but the, the most award that I was proud of was my Vanguard Award. And that's when I met Lanice Adams, and she seen it right there. She said, you are Fred. Wow. And I didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we here, baby. Salute to all of you. Thank you so much for giving her flowers while you can and while she can still smell them, you know. So that's yeah. Incredible. So before we, uh, we we give everybody a moment to say their last words, uh, I want to you know address a little bit of an elephant in the room. So you know, social media came and is here to stay. It looks like it. You know, so how is everybody doing? Let's start with uh, you know our brother Ernest here, and then we go to Robert, then uh, you know Jenny, and then you know Joanne, and then you know everybody else. So brother Ernest, you know how are you dealing with social media to keep up with everybody else? <laughs> you know, tweeting and uh, hashtagging and all that stuff for you. How how's the experience for you? You know, I'm I I'm on it. Um, I'm on it. I'm on everything. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on. Um, I'm on uh, Facebook. Um, yeah. My kids set it up. Okay. And so okay. I. Yeah. But I mean, I I would be all day reading all that stuff. If I, you know, I mean, I get like I. I'm not. It's not trying to brag, but I get a lot of of response from yeah. social media, and yeah. I go through it not every day, but you know, as much as I can. I'd be there all day doing that. Yeah. You know? yeah. But I it's a different age. It's something that I mean, look at those Kardashians and all those people. <laughs> right. They're out there, they're selling and making money yeah. somehow with all that stuff. So mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. get the way of the world. Even though technology kicks me in my butt, yeah. I got to straighten up and go with it because that's just the way it's going. So Absolutely. Yeah. That's how I'm dealing with it. Yeah, shout out to your kids for, for stepping up and helping you because sometimes uh, they're part yeah, of uh, my kids yeah. and grandkids. Hey, I the same kids. Kids. Give me that computer. <laughs> there you go. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, I feel like my dad, when I used to tell him, oh man, you can work a BCR, you can do it. And he was just, oh, it's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's a different day. I'm my dad. That's oh, amazing. Man. That's amazing. What about you, Robert? You know, you know, what time do you spend? Uh, how much time do you spend on social media? And when do you do it? Do you have a consistent time that you do it, or do you just uh, randomly just check your phone and, and and keep it up with that? I think it's pretty random, but I, but uh, I'm I'm as technically challenged as uh, Ernest is. But I <laughs> I I will say that uh, it is it is a reality that I mean I'm uh, you know. It's IMDb used to be the only kind of gauge, and I've, I've been I've been on movies where, yeah. the, where the producers are literally looking at your number on IMDb, and I so I try to keep that up. I, I, I'm not very good about that either, but I've got yeah. a few of my reels up there, and I've got yeah. and that has enabled me to get work. But I will say 
I'm, I'm a big Facebook guy. So yeah. if anybody wants to reach out, Facebook's my, my thing. And Facebook has kept me in touch. I mean, you know, I follow things that Ernest are doing, Mark, you know, all, you know, Jenny, I mean, everybody. And I, and I just, um, I, I love it because um, it's, uh, I've, I've reached out to, to big people. I've got, I'm yeah. grateful to have friends that are on there that I've said, listen, I hope I'm not being, uh, breaking some protocol, but I, I know you're doing this movie. Any chance I could uh, throw my name in the hat? And it's um, more often than not been a, been a fruitful uh, uh, try. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love Facebook. But uh, that's great. So, so hopefully you get a check from Facebook after this. You know, we yeah. <laughs> buy some stock. Buy some stock. I love it too. I love it too. <laughs> buy some stock. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> yeah, I've had the opportunity to do some really cool stuff with Facebook. You know, we have Facebook officers here in Seattle. So sometimes when they come up with new products, you know, so I would randomly get, you know, I don't know how they do it, but they just send me a message and I'll physically go to the office and they give you a computer. And then I do my reviews. I do my reviews and then I leave and then they are just based on uh, how much review we're giving them. So just the experience of that, you know, for me was really cool, you know. But uh, Jenny, for you, uh, we know that you're, you're still young. You're still 21, 24, like you said earlier. You know, so uh, what has been the experience for you when it comes to social media? I know you're very active. When I got to your IMDb, I was very clear of who you are and what you do. Then I went to your oh, Facebook, you. to, to your Instagram. Then I got lost because now there's like you upside down, you know, like, like, <laughs> so I'm like oh, wait a minute. I just left it alone. I said, you know what? I'll just talk to her when I see her. <laughs> so. So how so, are you balancing <laughs> and which, which platform is better for you? So Instagram is where you should find me, uh, J-E-N-I-A-N-N-E -N -N -E Jones, Jenny Ann Jones. Mm -hmm. And um, in, uh, I'm I'm a one-way Instagrammer. I look at social media as, media as an yeah. advertisement for what I do. Mm -hmm. And so everything you see me do on there is what I do. So, right. I'm, I'm very seldom posting opinions about things or whatever. I've got lots of opinions. We can have them when we hang out. But yeah. when I'm putting stuff on there, it's to reach out to collaborators. And I get yeah. more work off of, you know, I thought martial arts was nerdy. I would yeah. never post my martial arts. I thought that mm -hmm. was just such a nerd habit because I'm a girl and people made fun of me. Yeah. I put up my martial arts videos and suddenly every rapper was like, can you come do that in my music video? And I'm thinking to myself, that, well, that's like me, that's my workout, you know, in my mind, I was, and then I realized like, this is, this is the culture that we live in, which is like, if you're not showing people what you do, they're not psychic. So I look at it as like, when I'm putting stuff up there here, if you like it, cool. If you don't yeah. like it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you want to, uh, with, with your social media, you know, if somebody comes at you sideways, do you respond or do you just block them? Or how do you deal with that? If at all you're on social media. I am on social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram and I keep it simple. Joan Moten. Um, I learned a while ago that you can't win an argument with ignorant people. Mm -hmm. so I don't argue with ignorant people. Right. Um, I just let them go their way. I've, yeah. I've learned through age and wisdom to do my thing. I say, say, I don't apologize for my feelings because I'm very opinionated. Yeah. Um, but who you see today is who you saw yesterday, and that's who you're going to see tomorrow. I, I don't change. I'm always the same. It's authentic. And I love it. Love it. You don't have to like me, but I'm not going to let you disrespect me. Uh, I hear that. There you go. There you go. I also understand. <laughs> <laughs> that you can disagree and still be respectful. Exactly. Um, and yeah. it's my choice. If I don't like what you're saying, I don't have to tolerate you. I don't have to deal with you. It's That's very right. simple to me. It's mm -hmm. very simple. I think people make it so complex. Mm -hmm. um, I just keep it real and keep on stepping. Absolutely. No, we love it, man. We love it, jo Joan, for being here. You know, it's uh it's been a, a, a you know a very interesting time because we we're seeing a lot of different you know energy a lot of different uh history a lot of different backgrounds but but there's something that's consistent it's it's uh it's from everybody who's on this on this group right here it's uh the, the tenacity to continue on you know to continue and pressing forward even when you fall you still fall forward you know uh you, you keep going and brother sean i know you have a lot of energy as yourself as well coming from the streets and making all the way to where you are now you know how are you keeping up with social media when it comes to just well, music and, 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 and <laughs> to answer your question 
I have yeah. a slogan. Yeah. I was raised by OGs, not IG, right? <laughs> so what I mean by I was raised by OGs, I'm not from this era of IG, instant gratification, sure. box, liking you, right? right? Having opinions. Yeah. I'm from the raw, authentic, cut to the chase, right? But during this time, this new culture, I had to adapt. My kids set it up. You know what I'm saying? Like like Ernest said, I had to have my kids. He introduced me to uh, Facebook. Yeah. Instagram and all that, set it up. And then I started, you know, just connecting with a lot of people. I'm still not too savvy. I'm on in there. I post and I go. I'm never, I don't like to scroll, keep falling down a rabbit hole, falling down a right. rabbit hole. You could be the only thing, right? Right, right. So my thing is, like Jenny was saying, you know, it's, it's a good way to display what we do um, because people don't know. They're not psychic. So once you promote what you do, people can kind of get an idea, get a grasp of it. Yeah. Um, certain people know how to work it. I ain't, don't get me wrong. These young kids, they get on there, they become these, they do these little yeah. clown videos, become yeah. influencers, then they verify the next week. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I've done movies, commercials, nationals, all of that. Yeah. My new page ain't verified yet. They said I have to go do it and I have to go through the loop. Uh-huh. So I'm not even worrying about it. I'm just gonna right. wait. I'm, I'm gonna get on a hot big show. I'm gonna I'm I'm get really sizzling and popping. Yeah. And I'm going to let the studios do it. There you go. There you go. Well, well, Sean, you know, folks like myself, we assist, you know, folks doing it to that. Because for me, I don't do it for myself because I then I have to move differently. You see Mm -hmm. what I mean? You have to understand Mm -hmm. how, you know, the social media platforms are are created. You know, it's the same thing. Like right now, if I just a little advice to everybody here. Uh, when, when you see Facebook or Instagram, of course, you know, Facebook owns Instagram. We know that. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And they come up with new products. Jump on that new product. Yeah, yeah. Because that's where yeah. they send all the albums. So, like, right now, yeah. it's all about yeah. the reels. So, go back into your, your archives of short videos, short advice, whatever you do. Get mm-hmm. those all them there just a minute on 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 on, on reels and you'll be surprised yeah. exactly and, and not to cut you off let me get my handle just so we had it yeah. that's uh sean mcdonald that's s-h-a-w-n dot yes, mcdonald sir. m-c-u-n-a-l-d yes, underscore has um, and that's my website www.seanhasmcdonald.com Absolutely. We're going to, you know, you're going to be found. You're going to be found as people are working out from all over the world, trying to follow you, you know, watch just uh, over a period of time and see how, how much interaction you have with people. And I think, uh, you know, after this, we'll figure it out on how we can do it, whether it's feature one person at a time or two, or even as a group, you know, just, uh, mm-hmm. you know, so people can engage with us and continue to grow. And uh, Marcus, we saved the best for last this time around as well. You know, uh, how is your social media going and how have you used it to empower, you know, the movie, you know, uh, uh, you know, that's that everybody's talking about right now, you know, Heaven's Revenge. Yeah, well, the experience of being a producer really made social media just a whole nother monster for me. You know, yeah. you know, Sean mentioned about scrolling and everything. And now when you're, you know, you're promoting, uh, yeah. you're on it constantly. I mean, I wake up to it. I'm I'm constantly re-sharing and, and boosting now, you know, I'm yeah. putting money into the marketing. Yeah. Sure that, you know, you just get more and more eyes on the project, um, it really takes a lot, you know, mm-hmm. to get an independent film seen yeah. by a larger audience. And yeah. at the same time, what you realize is that the sky is the limit. I mean, yeah. Yeah. even, you know, what's doing this right now, we're, we're reaching out to, to Europe, to Africa, yeah. you know, all these people who are, who are watching. And, I mean, it's incredible to have everyone have been able to have this opportunity to really discuss their careers. Because really, it's almost like even if you know nothing about the movie, just seeing the quality mm-hmm. that are yeah. attached to it, it well, inspires someone to say, "I know this movie." <laughs> absolutely. Hey, hey, and what Marcus said, not to cut you off, yes, he sir. said the sky's the limit. Let me tell you something: the uh-huh. sky is just a beautiful view. Yeah. <laughs> the sky is just a beautiful view. Yeah. There's yeah. no limits to what we're gonna do or what can oh, be isn't... done. It's just uh-huh. a beautiful view. That's it. Absolutely, absolutely. No, very well okay. said. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching us right now, we're just about to close. We had the privilege of having all the cast from uh, the, the very, very good movie, Heaven's Revenge. I watched it a few times myself with my family. If you haven't seen it, please go out there and check it out. Those of you that are waking up from overseas, trying to connect with us, please take your time. 
visit all the IMDBs for all the cats that are featured today. You find and you learn a lot about what they do. So as we come to an end, I want to give everybody an opportunity to say goodbye and, uh, you know, have uh, uh, about 30 seconds of your time, please, so you can share where people can connect with you. So we want to make sure that folks can learn from you because there are a lot of people with questions uh, beginning from the top. Here, Jenny, please, uh, any last words from you, please, in 30 seconds? Yes, you can find me at J-E-N-I-A-N-N-E -N -N -E Jones. You can find me at JennyJones.com. And to anyone out there, just, you know, find what you love to do and do that thing. And if it's this, then you have a whole bunch of people on here you can reach out to and ask questions of, including myself. So J-E-N-I-A-N-N-E -N -N -E Jones. Thank Amen. you so much for having us on. I appreciate you. I uh, appreciate you, Jenny. Let's go to uh, Robert here, my brother. You know, any last words from you, sir? And how can the viewers connect with you? Uh, my email is hmfilms at mac.com. That's my little company, Hail Mountain Films. And uh, I'm on Facebook and IMDb. Those are, and uh, I've got a few movies coming out uh, soon, so hopefully... Uh, uh, they'll see that and hopefully uh i play the detective in heaven's revenge and uh hopefully you'll you'll watch you watch that movie soon absolutely absolutely thank you for being here robert you know we we are in support of your projects man you know uh anytime uh, you need us to come and support you and share you on please let us know thank, thank you so you. much for being here and uh, let's go here to my brother I know we our football talk is not over, but you know one of these days, man. You know, one of these days, hang one in there. I don't know if I'll be. I don't know if I'll be living, but uh, one day, the Lions in the Super Bowl. That'll be the day. I don't know. <laughs> right? Yeah. But um, I'm in Ernest Harden Jr. E R N E S T H A R D E N Jr. Um, for on Facebook as well as uh, Instagram and. Twitter, and so that's how you find me. I um and look out for my new movie, Sweetwater, about Sweetwater Clifton. It'll be out next year, um, during basketball season this time next year. So uh, it should be a really good one. Um, it got a lot of people: Eric Roberts, Richard Dreyfus, and uh, just a lot. It's a great Jeremy Pivot. A lot of a good, a great cast. So. Hey man, there you go. Yeah, yeah, we can't wait, man. We're excited, man. We can't wait to see you in the next movie, and we appreciate you. Thank you for being part of the cast in uh, Heaven's Revenge. Oh, yeah, I, 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 thank you, Lamise, for, for casting me. I appreciate it so much. You and Marcus, you guys Absolutely. are the greatest. Absolutely, thank and you. for you, uh, Miss Joanne, if you can, any last words, please? How can people connect with you? And thank you, you look lovely tonight. You know, how can people stay in touch with you? Like well, I'm under Joan Moten on Facebook and Joan Moten under Instagram. Um, right now, I just want to take a minute to say thank you to Marcus and Lenise for casting me as as Marcus. Well, as Aunt Virginia, I'm actually playing Jackson's aunt in the movie. Um, be on the lookout for A New Life, which is a film I'm in by Choice Skinner. Um, I also want to tell my senior sisters don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to go for what you want. Give yourself permission to be happy. Give yourself permission to do what you want to do. And just recognize that you owe it to yourself to take care of yourself. We take care of everybody else. Take care of yourself too. Love you and know that it's okay. It's, it's your responsibility to yourself. So that's all I have to say. Love you words of wisdom thank you so much for being thank here thank you very much brother sean any last words from you oh man i just want to tell everybody man keep following your dreams i know it sounds cliche but love what you do to believe in you um um never give up man when when that moment just kick in when you really just feel like giving up push a little harder because that's when that door and don't be afraid of the doors closing because god protects you from things sometimes that ain't for you you know what I mean? Some doors that's going to open for you are going to be perfect aligned for you. Amen. And, um, you know, I just want to tell people, man, just just treat people how you want to be treated. Um, this business is all about relationships. Never burn no bridge because you're going to have to cross that bridge sooner or later. Once again, sometime in this business, because it's a small university, we all run into each other. So, like I said, just treat people kind, have respect. 
you know, um, keep your integrity on your shoulders at all times, stand 10 toes down and know who you are before you get in this business. Because when you get in this business and don't know who you are, you're going to be all over the place. People pull you this way, that way, that way, that way. You won't know where you're headed. Know your strengths in this business and know your weaknesses. And, um, you know, like I said earlier, you can find me um, everywhere as Sean, S-H-A-W-N, has. It's always has in the middle, not just Sean McDonald. It's mm -hmm. Sean has McDonald. And you can Google that and all my IG, Facebook, everything will come up for the people to uh, follow back. Salute to the cast. Once again, salute to you. Thanks for having me on this show. And um, I continue um, to be great. And, and, and as I, I think I speak for all of us, we're going to continue to be great. And love what we do. And the sky's not the limit. It's just a beautiful view. Salute. We appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you very, very much. Thank you Thank for bringing you. energy. Thank you. Thank you for the words of wisdom for the folks that are watching us right now. And uh, brother Marcus, any last words as well as we um, come to at the end of the show here? Thank you so much for taking your time and just uh, everybody was patient and uh, just enjoying each other's company. So thank you so much. Uh, any last words, man, and uh, anything you want to say to this group of men and women who have been so gracious to be part of your project and uh, continue on as friends and as family? So what do you have to say to them? All right, so I have three big thank yous that, I, that, that are uh, actually announcements. Uh, so the first one is for all of the fans who have reached out, who have watched this movie, who have you know, told me I, they've watched it again and again. They've invited people over to have parties. For those folks who have you know, just truly fell in love with Heaven's Revenge, I have an uh, opportunity coming up with uh, Mr. Davies here. We, he's actually going to have me back on the show in about a week, and we're going to reach out and have uh, contestants, uh, fans of the film, and do a trivia contest. We're going to do it just in the same format that we're doing right now. And, uh, the winners are going to win both T-shirts and movie posters uh, of the film. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And it's our way of saying thank you uh, to all of those diehards out there who have enjoyed this movie and um, giving it to you. Um, and also, uh, you know, we talked about aspiring actors. Urban Renaissance Entertainment, uh, the company that I, that I run, is not just a production company. I'm also uh, hosting a, a uh, intensive one-week uh, actor for actors of film and television. It's going to be in an actual studio in Burbank. Uh, so this is you're going to not just learn how to act. You're going to learn how to act on set. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're looking to expand. You know, you, you just heard, you know, all of us as actors are crap. Are, paths cross constantly and we need people to come in and know what they're doing because the mm -hmm. worst thing I can never do is get an opportunity and not be ready and uh, this is working July 18th to the 24th it's two sets of uh, workshops ones they're both four days each so you choose which one works best for you we're doing it for all age groups as well uh, so just go to my website urban renaissanceentertainment.com to take a look at those flyers that we're posting here and you're so you can decide if this is for you. We're looking for A-list actors, meaning actors who are out here going all in. And we're looking to seriously take this take this uh, industry by storm. And you know we have big projects coming up, and they're all collaborative works. Revenge was a collaborative work with Lenise Adam and Kristen Lohman. Uh, so all of the projects that I do comes from my interactions with people and i'm looking forward to projects with sean with jenny yes sir Chris, joan <laughs> robert we're all going to be doing more work together um, you know kind of the adam sandler uh you know yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so. seeing these faces because we you know we yeah. always going to be something different about them in every story yeah so versatile also powerful uh, and we all have stories to tell. So it's all going to come from different you know, parts of our spirits, different parts mm -hmm. of, you know, times in our lives. So, you know, just keep keep your eyes open for us because we're, we're coming and we're already here as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, I want to give a big shout out to Mr. Lovey Ray Johnson, who's the director of The Sins, Seminole Indian Negro Scouts. And this is a, a film that uh, actually came from him watching this movie. He uh, came out to a festival and saw it in the theater and immediately cast me as the lead character, Adam Payne. This is a real you know, a single Indian soldier in the 1800s. So I just came from riding horses this past weekend. So this is gonna be as, as authentic as it gets. It's gonna be an amazing period. 
uh, about the this true story of these American uh, Indian Negro Scouts. That's uh, dope. Look out That's for dope. them oh, very soon. Uh, That's dope. Week. Congratulations, bro. Uh, thank you. Yes. Congratulations, brother. Congratulations. I remember you were telling me behind the scenes at the awards when I met you and you explained to me about the concept. And I was like, man, that sounds really, really dope, you know. And I'm glad that I, you know, you're seeing it through. And uh, and I'm 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 almost positive that you're gonna get to work with some of these cast that we have here, you know, depending on who's available and things like that, because this is like just a great group of talent. So thank you everybody for joining us. Yeah, it took us a while, but you know what? There's no thank way this in half or anything like that it was amazing to have everybody here uh and you guys we are here as a community to support you anything that you need moving forward we appreciate you so much i hope you can hang out with us a little bit in the, in the back there for just like a couple of minutes so we can say our goodbyes so thank you so much ladies and gentlemen thank you for having us and thank you for watching thank, thank you, you. Thank you. thanks for having me thank you guys <laughs> thank everybody thank you. god bless everybody thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.